वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल दिस इज फ्रेंड स्टॉम एंड यू आर वाचिंग सेवेंथ पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इफ नरुटो अवेक इन सेलेस्टियल चक्र इफ यू एंजॉय दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल नाउ वेस्टिंग नो मोर टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट द स्टोरी इट वाज द डे द डे दैट हैड बीन एंटिसिपेटेड बाय द रेजिडेंट्स ऑफ कोनहा एज वेल एज द डिप्लोमेट्स फ्यूडल लॉर्ड्स एंड शिनोबी हु केम टू विजिट इंडीड द लास्ट फेज ऑफ द चुनिन सिलेक्शन एग्जाम्स हैड फाइनली अराइव्ड इट ऑल बॉइल्स डाउन टू दिस for months the economic well being of entire villages would be determined by a single event perhaps for a longer time ultimately the word had gone out that these chunin aspirants were extraordinarily gifted and influential everyone but especially the potential customers wanted to witness it for themselves to see the power underlying each genin's battle and in the case of foreigners to evaluate their strength in order to devise counter strategies and yet There was a general feeling of unease throughout the village beneath all of the excitement and conversation. All season shinobi sensed it in their bones, alerting them to the impending arrival of something significant. It did not help that Jiraiya was inside the village walls, nor that there were far more anbu agents than normal patrolling the village. That being said, the Sandame Hokage's heart was still heavy with unease despite the large number of Konohagaku's soldiers present. No matter how things were planned or how the impending conflict played out, He knew that lives would be lost today. After all, even the greatest of shinobi, even a Hokage, can be defeated by a single slip. Up or errant weapon. He might very well breathe his last breath today, but if that meant paying that price to keep the village and its residents safe, then so be it. Even with just 1 hour left before the Chunin selection exam finale, Serutobi could still be seen in his office, going over plans with two of the most influential people in the village and going over dozens of intelligence reports because he would naturally like to live to see the days following the battle. Jiraiya, have you received any word from your spies? Nothing new, complained the Gamasani. As of right now, both Suna and Ado can claim they're performing a military exercise since no unauthorized personnel have crossed our borders. If Konoha was to take any action, we would undoubtedly be seen as the aggressor and no doubt have every other nation going against us. So in short, we are forced to wait for their first strike and pray that it isn't so severe that we cannot counter. Basically, yeah. It's definitely Orochimaru's scheme, scowled Serutobi. He looked at the other man in the room and said, "We can only hope our preparations are sufficient and fight back as hard as we can." And what of Yugure? Are your teams in position? Naturally, Minato answered. Divisions 2 and 8 have members in each of the enemy's main forces at the border, ready. Good, good. What about you? Come. Are you ready for what must be done? The elderly Hokage scowled deeply as he thought about this. Yes, I think it's time to finally correct an old mistake, he said, casting a sidelong glance at Jiraiya, who hadn't even given Minato a look since his arrival. I will not lie and say it does not weigh heavily on my shoulders, but as you say, it must be done. Don't hesitate. I won't, Minato. The elder's eyes lit up with steel. Orochimaru's time has come. And the other thing? Jiraiya and Serutobi scowled at this. It will be done, but only if you're sure. It doesn't matter if I'm sure or not, it must be done. They must know. Very well. Good, the Yugure commander said with a nod of approval and a glance outside. He could see that the stadium was starting to fill from their vantage point. It's time. Good luck. And just like that, he was gone. After a pause, Jiraiya started heading towards the door as well. He's right. Time to go. Jiraiya. He sighed, emotion choking his voice. Don't, Sensei. I know. I know it's him, but at the same, it's not. We were both there for his funeral. You saw him die sealing the Kyubi and his son, and yet, despite all that, he stood before us just now. You know how that came to be. It is him, Jiraiya. With that said, the Toad Sanin disappeared in a flash as Serutobi watched. I know that, Sensei, but you know how I feel about Yugure. About the whole thing. And I know it's him. I know that he's Minato in every way, but at the same time, he's not him at all. Oh, Jiraiya, I pray you realize just how fortunate you really are to have him here. 16 Chunin aspirants were gathering in the spacious stadium that would act as their stage for thousands of spectators during the last round of the Chunin selection exams, while the Hokage and his elite forces finished preparing. With the exception of two, every competitor had trained hard over the previous month and was now prepared. Where in Kami? Sama's name are they? They'll be here, Naruto. Kun. 
I hope so, Haku. Chan. The tournament is about to start. It so happened that the two missing competitors were his teammates, much to the chagrin of a certain blonde angel. Every few seconds, Naruto had taken to surveying the rapidly expanding throng, but he had not yet seen his persistently absent John and commander or either of them. I swear Kakashi. Sensei rubbed off on them somehow, he said. Standing next to him, Haku leaned on her boyfriend's shoulder and giggled. You know as well as I do that they wouldn't miss this for anything. I'm sure they'll be here soon. I know, but still. Maybe they just want to make an entrance? A sharp cold wave swept through the arena at that exact moment, as if hearing the Ice Maiden's words. The competitors felt as though a thousand. Pound weight was pressing down on their shoulders, and this sensation was quickly followed by a presence. There were only a handful who were unaffected, and they looked straight toward the tunnel that led down into the stadium. As expected, a figure emerged from the shadows. With an air of confidence and predatoriness, this individual stalked in, giving off the impression that he would eventually win his prey. That nothing would be able to get past him. He was inevitable, just as death was. The fact that the figure appeared to be death incarnate did not help either. There was a positively deadly. Looking Warside in his left hand, obviously made to harvest any and all souls its wielder might come across. He was also covered in a hooded red cloak that covered the majority of his face. That being said, one person recognized the figure right away. Naruto grimaced. He clicked his tongue and said, I thought we got rid of that ego of his. Show. Off. Slashing his scythe at the blonde angel, the figure snarled, you just had to ruin my entrance, didn't you? Naruto responded, of course I did. And don't point that at me, as he used Tenyu to knock the weapon aside. What the hell took you so long, Sasuke? I was starting to get worried Kakashi. Sensei had rubbed off on you. With his hood pulled back, Sasuke muttered, we had some. Issues during the trip that delayed our original schedule. To the astonishment of Naruto and Haku, in the month that he had been absent, the young Uchiha had developed two jagged scars across his left eye. Thankfully, the wound didn't seem to extend to his eye, but the fact that he had them in the first place still seems wrong. Sasuke, what happened? Uchiha gave a scowl. Devils, he uttered, casting a menacing glance at the smirking Daidenshi nearby. Sent by them, I suspect. What? How else can you explain a swarm of shadow fiends and a fucking devil of wrath showing up at the one time both Kakashi? Sensei and Zabuza were away from our campsite? Well, shit. Is that how you got the? Yeah, the Uchiha moaned, his hands reaching for his eye scars. Hurt like a bitch too. What about Kakashi? Sensei and Zabuza? They're fine. They got back five minutes after the devils show up and helped me finish them off. He grumbled. I'm the only one who got hurt. The devil of wrath got me when some shadow fiends attacked from behind. Damn. Well, at least you're not dead. That caused Sasuke to smile. He turned to Haku and said, hey, true. Zabuza went to see the Hokage. He said he'd come see you once the matches start since you won't be going first. With a smile, the Ice Maiden nodded her head in gratitude. By the way. He captured a poignant moment highlighting Haku's bond with his teammate. Something you two want to tell me? Are you two? Yes, Haku replied with a lovely smile as she rested her head on Naruto's shoulder. We're a couple now. Sasuke grinned broadly for the newlyweds and said, seriously? Congratulations, guys, before his voice became playful. Naruto, I hope you're prepared to face the third most dangerous thing in our world. Huh? What's that? An overprotective shinobi father. Naruto gave a blink. It took a moment for it to register. Oh. Oh, shit. Sasuke laughed. Yeah, you're pretty fucked. Uchiha laughed, and the angel glared at him. Oi, don't laugh. Your situation is going to be just as bad. What are you talking about? You do realize that Sakura. Chan hasn't seen you for a month, right? All that time without her, Sasuke. Kun, I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to fuck you right here in the arena as soon as she sees you. And you can't even run either. We have to be right here for the exams. That completely silenced Sasuke. Yeah, you're just as screwed as I am. In fact, I'd even say you're worse off than. Oh. 
Sakura. Chan. We were just talking about you. Though he had been apprehensive at first, the Uchiha laughed at his friend's blatant joke. Nice try, Naruto, but I'm not falling for that old trick. Sakura questioned him from behind, saying, What trick, Sasuke? Kun? Holy shit. Sasuke literally leapt 10 feet into the air and landed on his ass in shock at the unexpected appearance of Team 7's missing member, and Naruto and everyone else watching roared with laughter. Sasuke, Kun? What's wrong? N. Nothing, Sakura. Really? She questioned, her eyebrow going up. Really, so, um, how've you been? Horny. Fuck me. Oh, with pleasure. Luckily for both the audience's sanity and Sasuke's innocence, this was also the moment when a Jonin wearing a bandana emerged from a swirl of leaves, announcing the start of the tournament. Yo. Name's Genma Shiranui, your proctor for this part of the Chunin selection exams. Like in the previous stages, I want you all to remember that my word is law in here. If I say stop, you will stop. Got it? Though there were a few defiant glances from Gara and the Daidenshi, everyone nodded. Good. Now then, look alive, kids. The cages are arriving. The Sandame Hokage stood up above, on the balcony reserved for the cage and their guards. His eyes were filled with pride. Glancing down at the Konoha Genin awaiting him in the arena below, they shone brightly. If only there wasn't going to be war. How many of them will make it through the impending storm? Sarutobi pondered, his smile disappearing. He shook off his melancholy with brevity. It's not the right time. Everything is prepared to the best of our ability. The only thing left is. He grinned. Ah, case cage. Dono. Rakage, Dono. Welcome. The rakage of Kumogakure and the case cage of Sanagakure, two of the strongest shinobi in the world, stepped onto the balcony. Seated in the offered chairs on either side of their host, they greeted the Sandame Hokage warmly despite being flanked by two hooded guards and wearing serious expressions. The case cage said, Hokage. Dono, you seem to be doing well, from behind his face covering. Thank you for having us. The Sandame Hokage grinned again and said, Thank you for coming. You both must be tired from your journey here. Would you like me to order some refreshments? I'm quite alright, Hokage. Dono, but thank you for the offer. He shook his head, being the excited and enthusiastic man that he was. Drinks can always wait. Let's get on with the tournament. With a laugh, Sarutobi stood up. The stadium was packed with onlookers, shinobi, and prospective customers. More importantly, his Anbu commander just gave him the all. Clear that everyone was where they should be. Well, it's time to get started. He moved forward and opened his arms widely. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to Konoha's Chunin selection exams. Below you in the arena are the 18 shinobi who have risen above the odds to stand before you today, they have worked hard, sacrificing blood, sweat, and countless hours to their countries for the betterment of you, the people. And now, right here, right now, they seek your approval. To know that their efforts were worthwhile and to advance in their careers to become, Chunin. The crowd erupted in cheers. Will they rise to the occasion or will they fall before its trials? We shall see, now, let the tournament, begin. The assembly applauded. Genma grinned as he turned to face the competitors in front of him. The Meisten Genin nodded, but the Daidenshi and Gara didn't seem to mind. Okay, guys, this is it. The final test. Now, remember, my word is law here. If I determine that a fight is over, I expect all sides to stop or I will step in. And you don't want that. Other than that, there are no rules, just like the preliminaries. Got it? Regardless of what the Jonin said, they were going for the kill. All right, Sakura Haruno, Rock Lee, you two stay here. The rest of you can head over to the waiting room on your left. Naruto gave Sakura. Chan a one. Arm hug and said, good luck, Sakura. Chan. Sasuke nodded at the pinkhead and said, we know what you intend to do, but don't drag it out too long. Genma started addressing the crowds, and the Kunoichi just smiled back, turning to face her opponent. Genma turned back to the two genin who were now standing on either side of the arena, and said, Ladies and gentlemen, the first match of the Chunin Selection Exam Finals will now begin. Our competitors in this match will be Sakura Haruno of Konoha vs. Rock Lee, also of Konoha. To the roars of the audience. 
Combatants. Are you ready? Hi, hi. Very well, Hajime. The proctor's hand had just dropped when Li shot into thin air. He moved so quickly that the spandex. Wearing Taijutsu specialist had crossed their distance and delivered the opening blow in the half a second it took Sakura to blink. Had the Kunoichi's arm not reflexively shot up, catching the fist intended to cave her face while simultaneously retaliating with her free hand, that very well could have decided the match. Her blow was met, predictably, by a strong defense, and the two genin found themselves locked in a furious struggle. Sakura grinned. It's not just the fun kind of eager, the pinkette muttered in a suggestive whisper. The kunoichi laughed at poor Lee's inability to control his blush. Come on, Lee. Let's see whose taijutsu is better. Sakura's knee shot up and lodged itself in Lee's stomach before he could respond. A series of punches quickly followed, sending the taijutsu specialist sprawling backward. He did not, however, fall. Even after the unexpected assault, Lee swiftly demonstrated his resilience and resumed his forward motion. He delivered a series of high and low kicks after his punch turned into a hurriedly raised elbow block. Konoha Dai Senpu, Leaf Great Whirlwind Sakura's defense was breached in a matter of seconds by the potent combo, which sent the Kunoichi hurtling across the arena. Lee immediately started to pursue, but Sakura caught up to him and confronted him before he had gone half the distance. To the amazement of the onlookers, the two engaged in a fantastic battle of taijutsu, trading punches, kicks, and various other techniques. But it was obvious that Lee had the upper hand, even to them. He was simply stronger and faster by that much. Compared to Sakura, the shinobi dressed in spandex was dealing more hits and blocking more blows. She was aware of this. Sakura knew, in spite of her earlier arrogance, that Lee was superior in taijutsu, even at her base without her strength enhancement. This became very evident when she parried a jab, took a flying knee to her already bruised stomach, and realized too late that the move had been a feint. After the blow twisted her around and caused her to gasp in agony, Lee quickly capitalized on the situation by striking again, this time with a downward punch that sent her crashing into the ground, face first. Sakura, battered but not out, rolled onto her back in time to deflect Lee's next axe. Kick. Not that she thought it would help much, but at least it would give her some breathing room, so she tried to counter right away with her own kick. Or maybe it didn't. Sadly, Lee had discovered her true motivations. Lee didn't even grunt as he took the kick, instead of dodging, and went on to deliver the mother of all beatdowns. Shit. At this rate, I will lose. Desperate to protect herself, the pinkette thought. In between punches, Lee yelled, Come on, Sakura. Chan. You are better than this. Stronger than this. He stomped down on Sakura's guard and pressed, asking, Why do you falter now? Where has the youth and strength that I saw before gone? It was so beautiful, you were so beautiful. But now, seeing you fight like this, it this it? Is this really all your strength? Our Sasuke. Kun and Naruto. Kun that far ahead of you? That completed it. Sakura was a lot of things, but one thing in particular always made her angry she was thought to be less capable than her teammates. She had trained herself to the brink several times since they graduated from the academy nearly a year ago, putting in endless hours of work. To gain her strength, she had to shed tears, sweat, and blood. In order for her to become stronger, she had been forced to confront her actual self and share her weaknesses with those closest to her. She had survived to tell the story of her battles with Jonin, Devils, and S. Class Missing Nin she was a teammate of the champions of the Shinigami and Kami, as well as a champion of the Elemental Lords. By the grace of the gods, Sakura Haruno would not be losing today. That's it, Omoto, outer, an inner voice informed her. Give him hell. Yes, without a doubt. Doden. Kyojin no Chikara, Earth Release, Titan's Might. Wham. Sakura suddenly leapt to his feet and sent Lee flying with a crushing uppercut to the jaw. With a glaring look of anger in her eyes and her fist clenched back, she immediately followed up by leaping high into the air. Kyojin no Itsuchi, Titan's Warhammer With the force of an angry giant, Lee unleashed a punch that sent his hastily raised guard flying into the arena floor, creating a car. Sized crater and kicking up a cloud of dust that obscured his figure. Sakura, however, was not yet done. After all, she sensed her opponent even though she was unable to see him. Kyojin no Ono Titan's Battle Axe. Konoha Shofu, Leaf Rising Wind. 
Whack. In some way, Lee recovered enough from his opponent's attack to take off his weights, including two new weights he had been wearing on his arms, and counterattack with a kick of his own in the few brief seconds that separated him from crashing into the ground and Sakura planning her next move. A deafening boom marked the collision of the two powerful attacks, sending a shockwave rippling across the stadium, surprising many spectators with their screams and blowing away what was left of the dust cloud. However, no side triumphed over the other. Even now, they were dead. Yosh. Manly, joyous, excited tears started streaming down Lee's face. This is the fight that I wanted, Sakura. Chan. Your strength. Your skill. Come, Sakura, Chan. Let us fight with our full springtime of youth. Bring it on, Lee. This is where the real battle starts. Shanaru. Hora A.H.H. As the two competitors charged at each other and started fighting all across the arena, sending shockwaves with every collision, the audience roared in approval. It was quite the sight to behold, especially in light of the fact that both fighters were obviously getting along with one another on the field. With each subsequent blow and strike, Lee and Sakura were gradually acclimating to each other's fighting styles. They were tanking everything else, but that was happening less and less. They were blocking what they could, avoiding what they couldn't. I sense his movements, but he senses mine as well. I have to change things up. She jerked her head to the side to dodge a blow, thinking. Sakura saw an opening, and her hand shot up to seize Lee's outstretched arm. Then she spun around, hoping to fling her opponent into the adjacent wall, but her prisoner managed to back out of the move by flipping over the wall. Then, without delay, the taijutsu specialist used his aerial position to launch a devastating attack. Konoha Gufu, Leaf Hurricane. Shit. She yelled, crossing her arms. Tekai, Iron Mass. Lee launched dozens of punches, all of which came at such a rapid pace that it appeared as though he had grown extra arms. Even worse, every single one of those blows was connecting with its intended target. She was only able to withstand the attack because of the chakra that was circulating throughout her body, compressing and strengthening her muscles to the point of iron. She could still feel her opponent's fists, though, even at that point. Fuck. Even though I'm lessening the damage, I can still feel some of the force because he's so damn powerful. It's absurd. She pondered. Before he even opens any of the Hachiman, eight inner gates, at this rate, I'll have to use that. Lee eventually stopped his attack and leapt back, grinning broadly, realizing how little damage he was actually actually causing. Yosh. That was truly a marvelous defense, Sakura. Chan. He roared. But I'm not done yet. I have more tricks up my sleeve. Lee abruptly raised his hand in a tiger seal, much to Sakura's and many of the shinobi's amazement. What the? As you know, Sakura. Chan, I have no talent in either ninjutsu or genjutsu. And because of that, I have put all my efforts into becoming a taijutsu specialist. However, that does not mean I cannot use my chakra and apply it in something as youthful as gravity seal to further my training. He laughed. Kai, release. Sakura's gaze expanded. Oh shit. Lee was moving at breakneck speed before the kunoichi could even blink. Considering how stunned Sakura had been earlier, she realized she only had one choice now that he was moving so quickly. Tekai. Kyojin no Tate, Iron Mass, Titan's Shield. Konoha Kaigen Show, Leaf Rock. Destroying Rise. Wham. Sakura was sent hurtling backwards and crashed into the wall, coughing up blood, and the sound of her elbow hitting hardened flesh was so loud and powerful that even the cages flinched. Sakura was unable to move from her slumped position and could only look in shock at Lee. H. He defeated the Kyojin no Tate, Titan's Shield, which is meant to withstand strength comparable to that of a Janin. What was his method? She was a little shaken and wondered. Her inner voice, sounding totally serious, said, maybe it's the spandex? I mean, seriously, what other reason would he have to wear that fucking green eyesore? And she was correct. Look, Omoto, I know this fight seems hopeless right now, but we can still do this. We can. Just remember, you can still do what you were doing earlier, watch, anticipate, then react. His attack pattern hasn't changed, it's just been sped up and strengthened. We can still win this without having to use that technique. Sakura inhaled deeply. Yes, thank you, Ura, inner. That was what I needed. No problem. Now, get in. Oh, shit. 
Here he comes. Resuming reality, Sakura barely had time to dodge Lee's roundhouse kick before he delivered an axe kick. She deflected the kick with a quick slam of her forearm and counterattacked with a low sweep. Much to Sakura's annoyance, her opponent easily jumped over her counter and launched a flurry of punches and kicks in response, forcing her to go back on the defensive. Luckily, though, her intuition had been correct. Lee's strategies, attack patterns, and methods remained unchanged. Because of this, the Kunoichi was only taking a few light hits despite his enhanced status. Naturally, that's when everything abruptly changed. Lee was in the middle of a textbook Konoha Senpu, Leaf Whirlwind, when he suddenly stopped using the kick and changed into something entirely else. Instead of using the more direct movements of the Goken, Strong Fist, he changed into something that looked like a three. Fingered Claw with one hand. Ryusoken. Ryu no Kajizum, Dragon Claw Fist, Dragon's Talon. Lee surprised his opponent by using the momentum from his kick to swung his claw. Like hand at her, gouging three bloody lacerations across her ribs. Sakura staggered back and clutched her now. Bloody side, saying, Gia. Her eyes were wide with shock and pain. W. What was that? Lee grinned. The claw of a beautiful green beast. Wow, that was a pretty cool response from Lee. I can't believe I'm saying this, Naruto complained from the competitor's viewing balcony. And, seriously, what the hell? That's not Goken, strong fist. Yes, it's the most impressive taijutsu I've ever seen, Sasuke remarked as he observed the match below. Sakura was obviously struggling to counter her opponent's enhanced fighting style. But, why would Lee learn another style? I thought he was trying to be a taijutsu specialist. A sluggish, recognizable voice asked from behind him, Oh? Do you really not understand, Naruto? Kun? It was Kakashi. There are more than one kind of specialist. Wait, what? What do you mean? You see, Sasuke, Naruto, there are two types of specialists in each field, the Janin remarked in his typical sluggish tone. I suppose this isn't something I've really gone into much detail about. One type is to focus on a specific aspect of that field like, for example, being a taijutsu specialist in a single martial art. To basically become unmatched in that style. The other type, however, is more well-rounded in that it requires knowledge of several different styles. However, both approaches have their weaknesses. A specialist that focuses on just one martial art may someday meet an opponent whose style is the perfect counter. Similarly, a specialist that is more well-rounded might face an opponent whose mastery in their style is so great that no matter how many styles the specialist knows, it isn't enough to overcome the skill difference. In this case, I'd say Lee. Kun has chose to follow a path somewhere down the middle, in that he specialized in Goken, Strong Fist, but can use various other styles to ensure he doesn't become too predictable in battle. It's a very smart decision on his part. Guy is the same way actually. Oh, sh asterisk t, Naruto swore. So what style is he using right now? Ryusoken, Dragon Claw Fist. It's one of Kumo's preferred taijutsu style. He probably learned it from Guy. Hopefully, seeing this won't upset the rakage. Even if it does, there's nothing he can do about it. It was one of the compensations he had to give up after the whole Hyuga incident. Huh. You said Guy follows the same path in taijutsu as Lee, right? Sasuke inquired. How many styles does he know? At the last count. More than 30, Kakashi replied. And I have no doubt Lee. Kun knows more than just two styles of taijutsu. Sakura is in for a tough fight. Sadly for Sakura, nothing could have been said more accurately. She could honestly say that this was the hardest fight she had ever been in. Lee would switch styles every time she appeared to be getting used to his new fighting technique. There was Goken, Strong Fist, Ryusogen, Dragon Claw Fist, a style that was uncannily similar to the well. Known Juken, Gentle Fist, of the Hyuga clan, and finally something called Hasho. Ken, Eight Impacts Fist. Sakura was suffering as a result of it, and it was frustrating. In the last two minutes, she had already taken more hits than the entire fight. Konoha Senpu, Leaf Whirlwind. Hasho. Ken, Bujajin. 8 impacts fist, military leg heel. Whack. Sakura staggered back while spitting blood. How in the world was that? She questioned. Her defenses were totally overpowered by the kind of localized shockwave Lee's Hasso. 
Ken, 8 Impact's fist, kick produced, even though she had blocked both of his attacks. Her bones still felt like they were trembling now. That is one amazing martial art form, man. Utterly unblockable and most likely fatal if I take a direct hit. Sakura had no idea how she was going to counter this new taijutsu, but she was determined not to give up just yet. Ryusoken. Ryu no Kajizum, Dragon Claw Fist, Dragon's Talon. Sakura dodged the dragon's claw and tried to hit back with a haymaker, but she missed and was hit in the precise spot on one of her pressure points, temporarily numbing her left arm. The pinkhead was knocked onto her back by a series of punches, but she quickly got back up and leapt back, narrowly avoiding another dragon claw, and then launched a hasso. Ken, 8 Impact's Fist, Attack Regretfully, she had not gone more than 10 feet before Lee was upon her once more, his arms thrown back this time. Konoha Arashi, Leaf Windstorm Fuck. Sakura yelled, throwing everything she had into her fist and concentrating as much chakra into her working arm as she could manage without having time to dodge. Kyojin no Itsuchi, Titan's Warhammer. Another seismic wave shook the arena as the two attacks collided, but this time, a definite winner emerged. Sakura's punch was swiftly overpowered by Lee's attack's sheer force, which sent her flying across the arena and into the wall on the other side. Omoto, I think it's time you used that technique. Sakura slowly got back up onto her feet and met her opponent's gaze, saying, I. I think you're right. Her opponent had thankfully stopped his attack in case his final blow had been sufficient to end the fight. Taking a horse stance, Sakura said, not yet, Lee. Our fight is far from over. Her other hand reached up to touch the ornate tattoo on her deltoid, which represented the location of the elemental talisman of water's ceiling. As the green glow from her strength augmentation technique subsided, Sakura grinned at her opponent and said, Lee. You are truly an absolutely amazing shinobi. Through nothing but hard work, grit, and perseverance, you've become so strong, and you haven't even opened any of the Hachiman, eight inner gates, yet. And I know, as I am now, I can't beat you. But, with this, my new technique, her grin turned vicious. I can. The kunoichi said as steam began to rise from her body and her skin abruptly flushed, turning light pink. Her once. Voluminous, if slightly dirty, hair got wet and began to cling to her skin. But Sakura's eyes, with their newfound fire and confidence burning in them as she looked up, were perhaps the most noticeable change, at least to the shinobi who were watching. Gia Seconda, Gear Second. Sakura straightened slowly, one arm raised to raise a palm in Lee's direction, the other held back. It appeared as though she was aiming. Kaijin no, sea gods. Lee tilted his head to the side, as if unsure of himself. It looked a lot like the Hachiman, eight inner gates, even though he knew his opponent hadn't unlocked it. And from her words, it seemed that she had somehow gained strength. He was not sure how. Nevertheless, Sakura could not have hit him from such a distance, no matter how strong she got. Tsunami, Tidal Wave HRRKK Whack! It was too quick for the eye to witness. Sakura vanished in an instant, having been there for over 50 yards at one point. She simply vanished. After that, pain was all that Rock Lee knew. Agonizing, pervasive suffering. He appeared to have been struck by an erratically departing train before colliding with the wall. Even worse, he was utterly incapable of keeping up with the Pinkett's new pace, and her strength now far outmatched his own. The question, W. What just happened? Was thus raised by that. Not just Lee was pondering that. Naruto and Sasuke were standing on the competitor's balcony, gaping open. Mouthed at the battlefield. Naruto demanded, WH. What in the name of Kami? Sama did she do? It was astonishing to witness Sakura, who had never been very fast compared to him or Sasuke, suddenly move at speeds that would make even him jealous. Beyond the fact that she needed the elemental talismans for whichever method she employed, Naruto had no idea what she had actually done. Were you able to follow that, Sasuke? With a slow nod, the Uchiha fixed his pink. Haired teammate with his Sharingan. Yeah, but just barely, how did she do that? The angel shrugged, saying, I think she did something with one of the elemental talismans, but what? No idea. Damn, well, looks like you're no longer the fastest one on the team. I'm still a little faster, though not by much, still, looks like you're going to have up your own speed training. What? Sasuke asked, turning to face his now. Smiling teammate. 
What are you talking about? You do realize with her speed boost, she can catch you now. Sasuke turned pale at once. Oh, sh asterisk t, he said as a black cloud of sorrow materialized above him. I'm so fucked, it's not even funny anymore. Kakashi looked up from his erotica and said, yup. Sasuke. Kun, have you ever considered just going along with it? Do you not remember what she said a month ago? She wanted to use leather and whips. And The Icha Icha Kakashi issue that I was reading just so happened to feature bondage, in the ultimate case of serendipity, irony, or whatever force it was that despised Sasuke Uchiha. Do I look like someone who likes bondage? Well. Don't you dare answer that, you perverted cyclops. Hey, Kakashi. Sensei, maybe he bats for the other team. I mean, seriously, sex with Sakura Haruno. Kunoichi Illustrated's hottest teenage Kunoichi, and he refuses. You might be onto something there, Naruto. Kun. I know, right? I knew it. Jisei exclaimed as he instantly became very still. Why didn't you say so? I hate you all. Sakura was back on the field, waiting for Lee to emerge from his artificial crater. Even after taking her punch in the sternum, he deserves credit for only taking a few seconds to complete the task. Even better, there was now fire in his eyes. Despite having been dealt such a severe blow, he was neither afraid nor demoralized. No, he was ecstatic. His eyes gleamed as he exclaimed, Yash. That was most impressive, Sakura. Chan. He crossed his arms, hardly able to control his smile. Your flames of youth are burning even brighter now. Allow me to return the favor. He exclaimed. This is the battle he desired. A fight in which he could demonstrate to all that even a shinobi devoid of any skill in genjutsu or ninjutsu can be formidable and well respected. That perseverance and hard work could triumph over brilliance. It was time to prove his strength and go beyond his comfort zone. It was time to defend his ninja path. It was time for Rock Lee's youthful explosion. Hachimon. Kaimon, Eight Inner Gates, Gate of Opening. Kumon, Gate of Healing. Tomon, Gate of Life. Kai, release. Lee's skin turned a deep red, matching the color of his opponent, and pure power erupted from every pore. It was amazing to watch, particularly for Sakura who had created the move she was currently using using the basic ideas behind this technique. I only have roughly four minutes left in this state, just like Lee. The Pinket thought, I need to make them count before Gia Sakanda, year second, expires, remembering how she had invented the method. The realization that Kunoichi could never be as physically strong as their male counterparts had led to this realization. That being said, they were still able to improve their skills using certain unique techniques, just as she had done with the Doden. Kyojin no Chikara, Earth Release. Titan's Might. In light of this, Sakura started experimenting and eventually developed the gears, unique states that allowed her to focus all of her chakra flow into a medical chakra and onto an elemental talisman, giving her the ability to control and manipulate her own body. Sakura was using the elemental talisman of water in the instance of Gia Sakanda, Gear Second, to precisely control and increase her blood flow to insane levels, giving her body more oxygen, nutrients, and chakra without damaging her blood vessels or organs. She became exponentially stronger as a result, and on a bad day when she was smashed and suffering from a concussion, she could probably compete with Tsunade. Regrettably, there was a risk associated with such a strong state. Sakura could only maintain this form for a maximum of 5 minutes. Sadly, it also had the unintended consequence of rapidly depleting her energy and nutrient stores, leaving her weak and hungry. Not only that, but all of her chakra was focused on controlling her body, so she was unable to use any genjutsu or ninjutsu in this state. To put it succinctly, this fight would continue and end with taijutsu being used by both sides. Which is precisely what Sakura wanted, to be honest. She grinned. Come on, Lee. Let's see which is stronger my gears are your eight inner gates. Yosha. Shanaru. As they charged toward one another, both fighters shot forward, destroying the very ground beneath their feet and turning into blurs. Sakura's superior power blew Lee back a half a second after their fists collided, sending a shockwave doubling in strength compared to all the previous ones that rippled across the stadium. Astonished but unfazed, Lee immediately got up and got back into the fight, blocking multiple strong kicks from his opponent before launching a few combos of his own. However, he missed and received a fist in his face, which sent him flying across the stadium and leaving behind an enraged red mark as a memento. Before Lee knew it, 
Sakura had him by the leg and was repeatedly slamming him into the ground. Then she turned and threw the taijutsu specialist into the air, then she started to chase after him, emerging above him with one leg and both fists already in motion. Kaijin no Toridento, Sea God's Trident. Gia. Whack. With a loud bang, Lee struck the earth, leaving his body behind and creating yet another pit in the stadium. Sakura fell hard, missing him by inches as he leapt aside, giving him only seconds to try to gather his thoughts. He retaliated by attempting a strong roundhouse kick at his opponent's exposed back, but the girl deftly sidestepped his blow and delivered another devastating blow. Sakura yelled, Come on, Lee. Is that all you got? Where are your flames of youth? Before vanishing in a flash to grab her opponent's head from behind, jumping skyward, and slamming Lee face. First into the ground. She stomped down on his back, causing him to cry out in pain, saying, You're stronger than this, Lee. I know it. Show me, show everyone why you are one of our generation's best. Hora HHH. Lee pushed his assailant back and unlocked the next gate. Dayan. Showman, fourth gate, gate of pain. Kai, release. Now that's more like it. The two engaged in another titanic blow. 4. Blow sparring match before splitting apart. As the two fought faster than most could follow, craters and shockwaves seemed to appear out of nowhere, providing the audience with an absolutely amazing spectacle. The crowds had no clue what was happening until they collided, and even then, in those split seconds, they witnessed something genuinely amazing. Konoha Kyodai Senpu, Leaf's Mighty Whirlwind. Sakura stopped the strong kick with ease, but she soon regretted it. Already a bruise was forming, and boy, was it clever. With a furious expression on her face, the Kunoichi unleashed a torrent of punches that made Lee retreat. She then entwined her fingers and struck her opponent's chin with a hammer blow. Kaijin no Gun Shio, Sea God's Roaring Tide. Wham! Erg! Lee screamed as he smashed into the upper sections of the wall, breaking his jaw and a few ribs in the process. He had to forcefully extricate himself from the crater his body had created. He could still fight, though. Matamata, not yet. Sakura yelled back at Lee, his resolve almost evident in the pinkette's leap to greet him. Konoha Atsuriyokuha, leaf pressure wave. Clenching his fists, Lee destroyed the kunoichi with a fast. Moving overhead blow that also created a pressure wave of his own. Sakura not only experienced concussion. Related headache pain, but she also experienced acute vertigo and lightheadedness. She was taken aback. That was all Lee needed to employ his ultimate method at last. Whack, whack, whack. Sakura was tossed around like a rag doll, over and over. As he prepared to use the Ura Renge, Reverse Lotus, Lee was essentially bouncing around the arena, attacking his opponent non-stop with the walls. And Sakura wouldn't just lose if he was successful, rather, there was a strong likelihood that the impact would kill her. Fuck. This place is destroying me. And there's almost nothing left in Gia Seconda, Gear 2nd. I have to stop now. Sakura thought as Lee delivered another devastating blow to her back, spitting up blood. She knew there were a few ways out of this, but she didn't want to show all her cards to the Daidenshi. Sadly, she was being beaten so badly at the moment that she wasn't really sure what to do. Well, screw it. Sakura suddenly became even more covered in steam, and her skin darkened even further. The pinkette had just forcibly increased her blood flow rate beyond what she had been doing previously, temporarily increasing Gia Seconda's, Gear 2nd, power, but the change wasn't easy to make. However, such power has a cost. It was already very taxing on her body to use Gia Seconda, Gear 2nd, in its regular form. However, to raise it even higher. Yash. You've made this a truly amazing match, Sakura. Chan, but this is it. Unbelievably, he suddenly released even more power. With his fist and leg ready to end the fight, Lee was closing in and yelling, Daigo. Toman, fifth gate, gate of limit. Kai, release. He would strike his enemy with enough force to break a small mountainside in less than a second. Tenpo, sky step. Lee widened his eyes. Abruptly, Sakura appeared above him, both fists raised high. Sakura roared and slammed both of his fists into Lee's chest, sending the taijutsu specialist flying toward the ground and declaring, Kaijin no Tensoku, Sea God's Rule of Heaven. The subsequent crash sent a shockwave through the stadium and left a massive crater on the earth. 
Sakura had collapsed outside the crater by the time the shaking stopped. Her skin had turned completely pink, which meant that Gia Seconda, Gear Second, had been deactivated. She now appeared pale, exhausted, and ravenous. The pink had thought, I could really go for some celestial cuisine right about now. Sakura knew that the fight would not end until the proctor called it, regardless of how exhausted or hungry she was. Consequently, she rose gradually and hobbled towards the crater's edge. Lee? You alive down there? Sakura cautiously peered over the edge of the crater, hoping that her opponent had finally lost. She was too weak to continue fighting in this state. Lee? She asked, nearly collapsing with relief as she glanced down. He had left. She won, Sakura. Chan won. The crowd erupted into a roar as soon as they heard that statement. With the fight being better than they had anticipated, even the cages were clapping with enthusiasm. What a struggle, what a struggle. Undoubtedly a historical moment. Sakura ignored all of this. Rather, she was limping slowly over to Lee's lifeless body. Although it was excruciatingly painful, she had to say or do something. After what seemed like an eternity, Sakura finally arrived at the bloodied and bruised body of her opponent and knelt down. She said, you did it, Lee. You've proven yourself to be a splendid shinobi, and leaned over to kiss Lee on the cheek. And I have no doubt that in time, so long as you continue to follow your nindo, you will become even greater. Winner of the first match, Sakura Haruno. Naruto half asked, half joked, damn Sakura. Chan. What have you been doing the past month? As he assisted Sakura to a bench in the waiting area. With Team 7's reputation for wreaking havoc, the announcement that there would be a brief intermission to repair the damaged arena delighted Genma, who had just brought the pinkhead back from the doctors. Above them, the crowd continued to erupt in cheers and talk about the fight. It had been everything they could have dreamed of, the true might of Konoha revealed in the struggle between two genins vying for the right to defend their village at a higher level. The villagers of Konoha saw a better future and a more secure home with them in the shinobi force, knowing that the foreign onlookers would remark on their incredible strength. On a stretcher, Lee was removed from the ruined arena and medic. Nin waited anxiously. With tears of joy streaming down his cheeks, Guy had hurried off to check up on his student right away, exclaiming over Lee's youth. Tenton followed her, embarrassed but still worried about her teammate. Her enthusiastic sensei decided to congratulate Kakashi for his student's victory despite being overcome with tears for his student's youth. Yash. Kakashi. Your student's flames of youth shine brighter than my beautiful Lee. You must share with me your teaching methods so that Lee's flames of youth can become even brighter. How daring of Asuka. Chan to use the whip, huh? Is that what Guy is? How did he arrive here? Kakashi looked up from his book and thought. I'm sorry Guy, did you say something? Guy's eye exploded with flames, and he let out a cry. Curse you, Kakashi, and your hip ways. He exclaimed, leaving Kakashi bewildered by his friend's tears as he fled, sobbing uncontrollably. Sakura, a weary pinkhead girl, was seen grinning broadly at her triumph up until a loud growl came from her stomach. Much to the amusement of the team, the Kunoichi sheepishly said, sorry. Gia Seconda, gear second, accelerates my metabolism and always leaves me starving. Got anything to eat? With a laugh, Naruto withdrew a scroll and, in a puff of smoke, displayed multiple bento boxes, three of which Sakura quickly grabbed and scarfed down her throat at a speed that would make the Akamichi clan proud. Who's fighting in the next match? She asked Naruto as she looked up from her feast. 10. Chan and Haku's teammate, Heizo, not exactly a good match. Up with Heizo's abilities. Naruto nodded, didn't you help train her a bit? What did you teach her? By all accounts, Naruto was telling the truth when he said, mostly the basics of elemental wind manipulation. But that's all I taught her. No jutsu or special training. Whatever she shows in the match, it'll be completely original. The only thing he'd taught her was elemental wind manipulation. That's not teaching, though, is it, giving Tenten a weapon that she had to learn how to use on her own. We can't give them any information about our abilities because there are too many potential enemies nearby. Team 7 nodded and cast a sidelong glance at the girl who had just returned from seeing a teammate and was presently amusing herself by juggling a pair of kanai, without using her hands. As in, much to the surprise of nearby shinobi, she was juggling the lethal weapons with her newly acquired elemental wind manipulation skills. But Naruto could only observe with a huge drop of sweat. 
I didn't teach her advanced elemental wind manipulation for three weeks just so she could juggle Kanai and brag about it. Sensing Naruto's stare, Tenton looked at her teacher and friend, grinned, and went back to her juggling, much to the amusement of onlookers and the annoyance of the blonde angel. The team turned back to their female teammate, but the pinkhead was still going strong, so they turned to shake his head. To their surprise, they saw eight empty bento boxes. Naruto demanded, where does she put it all? Remembering that the girl was once a strict dieter. Aloha. Nice battle. I wish there had been more blood, but you gave that spandex. Clad ugly a good scolding. Zabuza moaned, wearing a menacing smile as he employed the moniker. Sakura's obvious annoyance as she cleared another plate made the rest of the group that had accompanied him to congratulate the girl laugh. The others, with the exception of Haku, Amy, Kira, and Kagome, who were all glaring at Sakura jealously as she carried on eating voraciously, echoed Zabuza's congrats in much nicer tones. Kagome complained, how can she eat so much and still stay thin? It's not fair. The other girls agreed. From her position in Naruto's arms, Haku counted 11 empty bento boxes beside the pinkhead and said, seriously, where does it go? It was completely crazy. She was aware of how excellent Naruto's cooking is from personal experience, and she frequently wanted to eat more but was unable to. And here she was, sitting in front of her, with her boyfriend's teammate having completed 12, no, 13 bento boxes, and still not giving up. Isn't it obvious? Shizuki asked with a twisted smile. She's only 13 but look at her boobs. They're huge. Be glad I'm eating Shizuki or you'd be a dead man. Yay, yay, you know you love it. And I love your boobs, just keep eating like that sweetie, the bigger, the better. You have a death wish don't you? A sex wish? Of course I do. Are you offering? I said death wish baka. I know you said sex wish. So you are offering. Fantastic. When and where? I was not offering. And do you have to be so perverted in public? Public? You want to have sex in public? I didn't think you'd be into that kind of stuff but whatever turns you on is hot and cool with me. I didn't go down with you back in the land of waves because I didn't know if I could trust you, that and you were flat. Chested, but now. Shizuki, as soon as I'm done, you're a dead man. Naruto, who had been savoring the banter between Sakura and Shizuki, became aware that his teammate wasn't acting right. Sakura was meant to be constantly aroused due to the talisman of fire, right? A month ago, she had demanded sex from Sasuke and had stripped an unconscious Otto. Nin for sexual release. Now, however, she was acting much more serious and rejecting every offer. It was as though she no longer had the talisman of fire. Sakura, Naruto said in a serious tone that caused the group to turn to face him right away. What happened? Sakura looked at her teammate and the others wondered what the two teenagers were discussing, and then there was silence. At last, she smiled a melancholic smile. So you got it figured out huh? Naruto asked, nodding while extending her arm and gripping her right deltoid. It was taken. Naruto's gaze expanded. Sakura just shrugged helplessly, that's impossible. You were accepted and given the mark. It didn't even have a physical form anymore. How did it happen? What do you think? She ambushed us. We didn't even get a chance to retaliate before she knocked all of us unconscious, when I came to, it was gone. I'm just lucky she couldn't steal the others. Out of all of them, she picked the one that you use for all your Yoso no Yuke, Elemental Fusion. That puts us at a big disadvantage and makes her much stronger, especially combined with the one she already has. Kagome and the others were beginning to realize something was off, and they were all looking forward to the confirmation. You don't mean to say. Why else do you think I worked so hard on developing the gears? Losing the talisman of fire to Reiko cuts my ninjutsu repertoire by more than half, maybe by two-thirds. I needed something to make up for it. Lee's taijutsu is much stronger than my own and he has more experience both with his style and in combat, the only reason I won was because the gears temporarily increases my physical abilities to a superhuman level above that of regular shinobi. It was actually quite unexpected to hear Sakura speak without inappropriate language. It was really weird to see the pinkette free of the talisman of fire's power after months of hearing her demand sex from almost every man in Konoha. A dense fog enveloped the group upon realizing the extent of their lost power and the enemy's gained advantage. To all but one of them, the situation appeared hopeless. That Daidenshi babe puts a whole new meaning to the word hot. I can't wait to fight her and bang her. 
While everyone else laughed, Amy snarled and smacked the demonized swordsman upside the head, saying, Damn it Zabuza. Can you please be serious for once in your life? Zabuza's distinct sense of humor was useful for relieving tension, if there was one thing he was good at besides murder. Below, with his ever. Present Senbon protruding from his mouth, Genma addressed the crowd once again as he made his way out to the freshly repaired field. Thank you for your patience. We will now continue with the tournament. Would Heizo Kayaku and Tendon Kazuki please step down to the arena? Before their fight, the two genin nodded respectfully to each other as they headed for the looks. Heizo glanced at Haku as they were leaving the waiting area, but when he did, he saw that she was encircled in Naruto's arms. When the brunette saw this, she smiled good luck to her teammate and went back to talking to the blonde angel. Heizo's heart gave him a brief rush when Haku smiled at him, wanting to give him her whole attention, but it quickly burst when she turned to talk to her new boyfriend. Oh, how Heizo detested the blonde angel who was Naruto, Haku's new boyfriend. As the creator, he was notorious in addition to being well. Known for his abilities throughout Konoha. Nevertheless, in spite of everything, it seemed as though he had won the blonde's heart and that wasn't enough for her. Did his ancestry play a role? Was it because he was a namikaze that everything was given to him on a plate? It was heresy. Heizo Keiyaku had trained until he was nearly exhausted every day to improve his abilities and win over his teammate, but Namikaze had taken it all away from him. Heizo was the one who deserved to have a coup, not that flaky, blonde bastard. He would demonstrate it. No matter what it took, he would have Haku, and he would begin by setting an example for the pitiful girl he was going to battle. The audience erupted in applause and cheered, ladies and gentlemen. The next match of the Chunin selection exams will now begin between Heizo Keiyaku and Tenten Kazuki, both of whom are from Konoha. Combatants ready? Hajime. Similar to her partner, Tenten charged forward without giving her opponent any time to prepare, emerging above Heizo with a hundred kanai already raining down on him. Heizo was relieved to be able to flee as the replacement log was reduced to splinters with a swift kawarimi no jutsu, body replacement. With a scowl, Tenten quickly whirled around and threw three shuriken at Heizo, who had just returned. Heizo remarked, you're certainly eager. As he moved to a safe distance from both attacks and easily avoided the projectiles. With a swift move, Heizo blocked Tenten's next set of shuriken with his own kanai, and Tenten vanished in a flash, determined to bring the fight to close quarters. Tenten exclaimed, pulling out a scroll and whirling it around her. Oh no you don't. Sogu. Kaitengi, manipulated tools, gyroscope. In a cloud of smoke, dozens of enormous spike balls and kanai emerged from the scroll and whirled around her at breakneck speed, forcing Heizo to stop charging lest he turn his head into a smeared mass of blood. The enigmatic genin sneered behind his mask and leapt back. I see you went ahead and copied the Hayuga's technique, the Hakesho Kaden, eight trigrams palms heavenly spin. That really is quite creative of you. Tenten just scowled, annoyed that even with her newest technique, her opponent had not even been scratched by her first couple of attacks. But the fight was far from over, and she still had a few tricks up her sleeve. Well, I needed some kind of defense and using a shield isn't very effective in the shinobi world, so I improvised with Neji's help. Now how about I show you the fruits of my training? Shunshin no Jutsu, Body Flicker Technique After a short while, Tenten materialized next to Heizo carrying two tonfa blades that were rapidly approaching his head and glowing with the distinct indications of wind chakra. Heizo was swiftly forced to raise his arm by instinct as chakra moved toward the oval mirror that was fastened to it. Ninpo. Kiyoman, ninja art, mirror surface. Click. The tonfa slid halfway through the thick glass before slamming into a mirror shield and stopping. A wind chakra. Augmented blade was stopped by Heizo's shield, a feat that left dozens of shinobi and tentacles wide. I'd. Tenten could do nothing but gaze. How? Heizo whistlingly said, Wow, your tonfa sure are sharp. No one's ever pierced my Kiyoman, mirror surface, before. He then abruptly pulled back the shield and slammed his fist into her stomach. Heizo did not give the girl a break. He pulled out the tonfa that was lodged in his shield and swung it at Tenten, deeply cutting her arm as she leapt away. Heizo was forced to back up and avoid the shuriken that were thrown at him in the next moment as Tenten staggered back in agony but struck out with a kanai. Tenten mentally threw away the other weapons as she kept hitting her opponent with them, hoping that her opponent wouldn't use them against her. Heizo, however, was not going to allow the brunette to lead the entire game. 
It was time to exact some revenge and establish his value in the eyes of the public, his boss, and most importantly, his teammate. Hazo threw away his shield, raising his hand in a distinctive seal and tossing out a small oval mirror. Abruptly, the tiny mirror broke, splintering all the way across the arena. Tenton scowled at once, remembering all that had transpired at the preliminaries, and she rapidly committed to memory the locations of each piece of reflective glass surrounding her, blocking out the ache in her arm. Hazo disappeared as he charged forward, Senban in hand, saying, prepare yourself. Tenten's head had been gone for only a few seconds when five of the needles shot past and disappeared into the mirror shards behind her. We're outside, and the majority of the shards are facing upwards. Wait. If he can't reflect and summon them from a solid surface, how can he use that technique effectively? Tenten, however, was prevented from thinking any farther when two Senban abruptly buried themselves in her arm. Tenten was forced to move to avoid being turned into a pincushion by the swarm of Senban that appeared and flew toward her before the girl wearing buns had a chance to scream. How did so many Senban exist? Throughout the entire fight, she had been watching Heizo and had only seen him throw five needles. Nevertheless, she was continuously dodging dozens of needles that seemed to appear out of nowhere. It was nonsensical. This did not resemble anything from the preliminary phase. Heizo laughed as Tenten, dripping with Senban, was finally allowed to catch his breath. I know what you're thinking, did you honestly believe I'd use the same technique when Namikaze? San broke the technique down and explained all its weaknesses? Taste my new and improved technique, Ninpo, Mugen Sunpo no Heian, Ninja Art, Shards of Infinite Dimensions. The crowd gasped in amazement as Heizo threw one Senban into a nearby mirror shard, and it vanished. Abruptly, Senban needles shot out at random intervals from every other shard, all aimed at Tenten. This is completely crazy. I have to stop dodging like this because the Senban are shooting out of me at random and always at an angle, regardless of which way the glass is facing. Biting back a scream, Tenten thought as three more needles drove themselves into her back. Even though I lost this match, I still have one more chance to impress the judges. For the time being, Let's see how Naruto responds to this as I need to save his gift for the invasion. Heizo remarked in an almost mocking tone, I'm impressed Tenten. San. You were hit with dozens of Senban and still on your feet. But I suggest forfeiting before you lose too much blood. Many could tell, even with the mask on, that Heizo was beaming with pride at his victory. Though Tenten was quickly going unconscious, she wasn't about to give Heizo the last laugh. The weapon's mistress summoned all of her weapons with explosive tags attached by using the last remnants of her chakra. Tenten took a deep breath and performed a seal sequence while chakra strings raised the weapons in front of her. Tenten screamed, Sogu, Tyrio Hakaiheki, manipulated tools, weapons of mass destruction. As a strong whirlwind tore out of her mouth, dragging the elevated weapons with it. As it roared toward Heizo, the now even more lethal tornado of metal and explosives tore across the field, completely destroying every mirror in its path. The deadly gale of metal changed into a massive force of flames, pressure, and shrapnel, and all of a sudden the explosive tags detonated. As stray pieces of metal flew past their heads, even the audience above felt the heat. Heizo's eyes grew wide as he saw the virtual wall of destruction yelling toward him, never once imagining that Tenten, who, based solely on appearances, was just a girl who liked sharp objects, had something planned. Ninpo. Kiyoman, Ninja Art, Mirror Surface. Just before Tenten's attack actually hit Heizo, a huge shield appeared strapped to his arm. Heizo pushed back desperately, but the cyclone of metal and fire slammed into the shield, sending him crashing back into the stadium walls. Pellets of shrapnel streaked by, cleaving through anything not shielded. The shrapnel and flames did their work, severing his tendons and scorching his skin through the clothes, causing his exposed feet and calves to give out. His left leg failed him in a matter of seconds, bringing him to his knees. Next, the other. Heizo sensed his shield beginning to break, but it eventually stopped. Even though it was only 15 seconds long, it felt like an eternity. Heizo peered over his shield, squinting behind his mask as he saw the damage Tenten's attack had caused to the arena. Tenten, who had finally passed out, lay at the other end of what appeared to be a warpath, with flames and metal fragments leaving scars on the earth. Winner. H-E-I-Z-O Kayaku. This was his win. He had prevailed. Glancing up, 
Heizo saw Haku grinning in his direction while she joined in the applause. Indeed. Namikaze, take that. I'll have her soon enough. The crowd, enthralled with the match that had been the ideal continuation of the first, continued to roar in approval. There was a lot of weaponry, some taijutsu, and a brief introduction to ninjutsu. The audience particularly enjoyed the final attack, which fused ninjutsu and weapons into one horrifying and devastating force. Naruto muttered, damn, she's been really busy, as he watched the medics remove Heizo and Tenten to tend to their wounds. All I taught her was elemental wind manipulation and she goes ahead and creates a nuclear explosion with weapons. Haku pressed her lips to Naruto's and said, Naruto. Kun, I'm going to go check on Heizo with Zabuza. Sama and Kira. Chan. Regretfully, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, Naruto desired more from Haku than just a quick kiss, so he drew him in as he intensified the kiss. The air was heavy with lust. Filled moans as the couple made out, and then they broke up, staring at each other and ignoring their friend's mocking glances. After giving Haku a final peck, she and her team departed, and Naruto's smile turned into a frown. Heizo's attraction to Haku wasn't the only thing that bothered him, though. No, with the invasion drawing near, now was not the time to consider that. But he did shoot Zabuza a sharp glance, and the demonic swordsman nodded. Zabuza should be more than enough to defeat Heizo and anyone else with him. He'll keep Haku safe, even if something's up, Naruto reasoned. Naruto jerked his head in the direction of the arena, turning to face his teammate. Your match is next Sasuke, try not to show off too much. You got a lot of daimyos betting on you and I'm sure most of them put some kind of time limit. Yay, I know. I'll kick his ass, just wait till you and I fight. I still need to get you back for those laxatives. Sakura, Kakashi, and Naruto all let out a loud laugh as they remembered the time Sasuke still had a tree stuck up his ass. Once the blonde had had enough of the conceited Uchiha, she proceeded to add laxatives to Sasuke's favorite food, tomatoes. It goes without saying that Sasuke punished his toilet for the remainder of the afternoon. Sasuke simply gave his giggling teammates his trademark death glare, which made them laugh even harder. Perhaps if he sent them all to hell, specifically to the area where the outcast succubus and incubus were located, they would be quiet. With a laugh, Forsaken said, and they called the Daidenshi evil and sadistic. They got nothing you. Knowing that succubus and incubus were only banished if they were incredibly ugly and positively repulsive to look at, the ancient celestial being latched on and raped anyone or anything they could get their hands on. Sasuke himself had multiple near misses as a result of their banishment. With a shudder, Sasuke cast those terrifying memories out of his mind and concentrated on the here and now. The Uchiha then became aware of something. Hey Naruto, where's Hitomi? Chan? Knowing that his teammate had a soft spot for his daughter, Naruto smiled. She's with Yugo and Tenzo exploring the village. Sasuke nodded, relieved to learn that the cute little girl, who could easily pass for the team's daughter, was safe and under good care. He was aware that, exploring the village, referred to the evacuation site. He was curious about the strength of this Kumo. Born shinobi named Jiro Agawa. Having fought his teammate in the preliminaries and being a student of the Rakage, Jiro was undoubtedly a formidable shinobi. While Sasuke was still mentally preparing for the impending battle, Sakura and Naruto were conversing with the Zabuza group members who had stayed behind. You guys, what rank are you? I never asked. What about the rest of you? We know that Zabuza is Junin and that Haku and Kira are Genin. Sakura inquired. Due to numerous high ranking missions in her training, Sakura hadn't exactly had many opportunities to talk to the group since their return from Wave. In fact, she felt a little embarrassed not to know her friend's shinobi ranks, but they didn't seem to be bothered at all. I am Junin, and so is Eren. Kagome. Chan is a Chunin and Shizuki is a Tokubetsu. Junin in Kenjutsu, Amy responded, mentally checking that she had mentioned everyone. Whoa. You guys are everywhere, Sakura remarked. The group chuckled. Actually, Haku and Kira should both be Chunin but they wanted to remain with Zabuza and people closer to their age group so they decided to be Genin. Your ranking system is far more advanced than the previous Kiri. Azrael remarked, I'm not sure what their system is now though so for all we know, this would be our current rank if we had remained in Kiri. Back then, we would all be considered Anbu or Junin instead of what we are now. Only Zabaza's status remains the same among all of us, as an elite Junin, as it did at Kiri. 
Sakura scowled in response to this new discovery. Why is Zabaza's rank correct while yours isn't? After the Anbu commander and the Mizukage, the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist are the highest ranking shinobi. In terms of the military, they are similar to your Sanin, albeit perhaps not quite as strong. Naruto laughed and said, and now, thanks to us. Zabuza is now even more powerful being demonized from the hellfire I summoned. Suddenly, as he looked at Guy and Tenten coming out of the hospital, he had an idea. He was so preoccupied with his thoughts that he failed to notice some new members of their group. Finally, he said, you think I could shave off some of Lee and Guy's eyebrows and give them to Zabuza to make his own? Gaki. He recognized that voice, and the, your screwed looks, on Sakura and Kakashi's faces further reinforced his current state of death. Fuck. I suggest you run Gaki. Zabuza, I didn't mean it at all. How brazilious are you to believe me? Perish. Whoa. Observe the location of your swing. Guys, damn it. Aid me. She knew Zabuza wouldn't really kill her boyfriend, but that didn't mean he couldn't let her surrogate father have some fun and get back at Naruto for making a scene at the start of the tournament. Sorry Naruto. Kun. You dug your own grave this time, Haku said nonchalantly. With a chuckle at the humorous scene, Sasuke turned to face the arena and was relieved to see that the damage from the previous match had been repaired, compared to Sakura's battle with Lee. It was time for his fight, but he needed to save his chakra because he didn't know when the invasion would begin. We're about to start the next match. Could Sasuke Uchiha and Jiro Agawa please visit the arena? In their excitement, both competitors leapt down onto the arena, skipping the steps. Kakashi looked up from his book in time to see Sasuke's ecstatic expression, thinking, looks like Zabaza's bloodlust rubbed off on Sasuke. Sakura and Naruto could only nod, having witnessed the expression on their teammate's face. It was a little unsettling to see their friend's bloodthirsty expression, but they knew that going to hell wasn't exactly flowers and cuddles. A month in hell, which had felt more like a year, had truly enhanced Sasuke's abilities. He was faster, stronger, and above all, downright devious and merciless. Fighting demons, monstrosities, and devils, all of whom had no problem foregoing honor and using every dirty trick in the book to win, left a true impact on the Uchiha, and Zabuza, and the world was about to see the kind of devil he truly became in battle. Their Sasuke was swinging forsaken around with excitement, more than ready for battle. Gentlemen and ladies. Now let's get started with the Chunin Selection Exam Finals match. Sasuke Uchiha from Konoha and Jiro Agawa from Kumo will be our competitors. The crowd cheered, well, the shinobi and older civilians cheered, the younger girls, all of whom were Sasuke's fangirls, squealed. Combatants ready? Hajime. A silence fell as the two genin locked eyes, their eyes the color of onyx. Jiro looked like a typical Kumo. Nin, with messy white hair, dark skin, and a muscular build similar to the Hokages. However, unlike the other Kumo, Nin Sasuke had seen, he was dressed in a white muscle shirt, black cargo pants, and bandages wrapped around his hands and up his forearms. On top of that, both the top and the bandages bore elaborate writing, which Sasuke recognized as a seal after studying them. Jiro was doing much the same thing across the field, scanning his opponent for any general information or weaknesses. Izumi fought him and lost. Even though she's the weakest member on our team, most shinobi still consider her to be high chunin level. I'll have to be careful and especially avoid that scythe, Jiro said. While the previous fights had been exciting, it was a welcome change to see one of his own shinobi getting ready for battle. Up in the cage balcony, he smiled upon seeing his student enter the field. Serutobi. I hope you're ready for your genin to be defeated. The Rakage was aware of Jiro's strength as a shinobi, despite the fact that he was a rather bloodthirsty one, even when his student faced Uchiha. Sasuke. Kun is renowned for his fighting skills and is a superb shinobi. The elderly Hokage looked confidently at the imposter case cage, I do believe Konoha will be victorious in this fight, a reference that went beyond the exam. Not going to give anything, E.H. Orochimaru? I suppose we will only get answers when the battle begins. Turning back to face the Rakage, Serutobi chose to lighten the mood. Rakage. Don't know. Since you're so confident, how would you like to make a friendly little wager? The Rakage scoffed, but he did so with a smile that suggested he wasn't trying to offend. Bah. Your detriment my student completed 3s. Ranked missions and defeated the Uchiha. 
your student rakage. Dono seems to have a lot of confidence in you, but my village has never been one to back down, so you're on. Be ready to let go of Serutobi. We'll see. Are the fighters prepared? Hajime. The audience could only watch blurs of the two teens fighting, thankfully not as fast as the first match, and catch glimpses of when they collided, their bodies momentarily frozen in space before the force behind their attacks rocketed them back. Both shinobi vanished in a burst of speed the second Genma gave the signal, the sound of metal clashing against metal sounding off throughout the arena. Four shattered kanai fell to the ground, and with a sickening crunch that made everyone wince, the two shinobi reappeared, flying back with obvious bruises on their faces, using their own finely tuned dexterity and flexibility to flip back onto their feet and race off along the stadium wall in opposite directions. With the two gathering speed, Sasuke finally produced Forsaken and shot off the wall with a burst of chakra, his legendary weapon of death glinting in the sun as he swung down on Jiro, missing by the narrowest of margins as it carved a deep scar into the ground and wall. Flipping over to land on his feet, Sasuke was just in time to raise his arm in defense against a powerful punch that was followed instantly by three kicks to his side. Screaming, the Uchiha activated his Sharingan and shot forward once more, his blade now dancing with ethereal flames as he attacked with a deadly combination of stabs and swings. To the amazement of the crowd, Jiro continued to dodge each attack as the two fought on the wall in a gravity. Defying display. The pain and force knocked Sasuke back, almost causing him to slip off the wall before he regained his balance. There was silence as they stared at each other after what felt like hours of fighting, but was really only a few minutes. Jiro had only burnt clothes and no visible wounds from the fight. When Sasuke finally broke the tense silence between them with, you're good, the Uchiha naturally returned the bloodthirsty grin. I mean, you're not too horrible either. Of course I am. But enough of the warm. Up. Let's go all out and prove to everyone just how deadly we really are. Let's see how strong that fancy lil scythe of yours really is against my gauntlets. The seals adorning his bandaged arms suddenly flared and vanished under a pair of bronze-bladed gauntlets, smaller than the rakages but appearing equally deadly with the razor-sharp blades protruding from the sides. Suddenly, there was a crackling sound along the bronze metal. Do you believe you can defeat me? Sasuke challenged, collapsing Forsaken into its sword. Gauntlet formed with a sinister grin. His battle chain was already attached to the side with a third wrapped around his gauntlet. Eerily silvery blue chakra with hints of black began to swirl around Sasuke as he settled into a stance. Bring it! Both shinobi shot forward at speeds faster than the civilian could keep up, slugging each other around the arena with their favorite weapons. Showers of sparks marked the end of their brief encounter before they split up again. Blood had already started to stain the fields as they engaged in combat, completely oblivious to their wounds in the excitement of the moment. Every blow they delivered was fast and intended to maim or kill. A battle between formidable shinobi out for the kill, this was exactly what Jiro wanted. Nothing else mattered to him in the heat of battle, not his teammates, his teacher, his family, or even his village, this kind of feeling was unmatched. Even as the Kumo. Nin skillfully dodged each lethal strike, Jiro couldn't help but smile. Jiro saw his chance to retaliate after Sasuke's fallen scythe slightly overran its blade. With a swift tripping sweep and a primal roar, the Kumo. Nin did just that, slamming his electrically charged fist into his flailing opponent's gut, only for it to pass straight through Sasuke's body. Genjutsu. Then, though, where is he? Right here, a voice whispered behind him. Fire release, great fireball technique. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, fire release, great fireball technique. Jiro was left reeling as Sasuke buried Forsaken into his side, only reflexes and instincts keeping him from severing in two. Blood splattered onto the ground as the weapon was ripped out, aggravating Jiro's wound before Sasuke leapt back, but he had no intention of giving his opponent a break. There was silence as the crowd was shocked by the contestant's death, but then an ominous voice resounded throughout the stadium, Raiden. Shirai, lightning release. Lightning strike. Death seemed imminent as the gigantic orb of flames closed in, obscuring the Kumo. Nin from view as it exploded into a roaring blaze. The crowd erupted in horror as they saw their beloved Uchiha light up from the electricity tearing through his body, only to realize that Sasuke seemed completely unfazed, standing perfectly still and staring at the inferno from his previous attack with a smug look on his face. A bolt of lightning shot out from the flames and slammed into Sasuke with deadly electrocuting accuracy. 
your teammate used the same technique against me in the preliminaries. I think she called it Rejeki no Yoroi, lightning strike armor, Sasuke cocked his head to the side, recognizing the technique, and saw that Jiro was enveloped in lightning with his wound bandage, though the wrappings were already stained red. Jiro knew he didn't have much time before the wound rendered him unconscious. Yes, as you can see from our rakage. Sensei, our team is proficient in Nintaijutsu. We're kind of like your pink teammate from the first match, Jiro grinned. However, how are you not hurt? I used a technique that hit you squarely. To the surprise of both Jiro and the spectators, Sasuke's body broke apart into dozens of ravens that started flying around the stadium. As they flew, feathers broke off and fell around Jiro, who whirled around in obvious confusion. Sasuke simply laughed and disappeared, already charging at his opponent with Forsaken poised to kill. Genjutsu? What is this? Jiro asked as the feathers started to gather and take shape as they got closer to the ground. Before he knew it, ten images of Sasuke were surrounding him, all of them charging as soon as they formed and more were on their way. They were all holding weapons, ready to kill, and Jiro did the only thing that came to mind to save himself from this rapidly getting worse. Kai, release. The illusion vanished in an instant, along with the clones and ravens, revealing Sasuke only a few feet away, his weapon already in motion. A flash of silver that would have split Jiro had he not corkscrewed over the swing ended with Sasuke slamming his scythe into the ground and using it as bracing to nail a rib. Shattering kick to Jiro's chest, imagine what Zabuza did to Kakashi in the manga. The blow sent the Kumo. Nin hurtling, and Sasuke followed up with a downward swing that was just barely stopped by his gauntlets. Unfortunately, the force of the blow smashed Jiro into the ground, forcing him to cough up blood as he struggled for air, and Sasuke's boot pressing down on his chest, even with the lightning armor. You want to know how I wasn't even scratched by your lightning? If you are able to beat me, I'll tell you. As he swung his scythe once more, Sasuke laughed, his tone brimming with bloodlust. They were ninja. Honor didn't exist for them, even when they were attacking a helpless opponent who seemed ready to forfeit. As the blade dropped, Jiro's eyes grew wide. Shit. Hoden, discharge of electricity. A thick cloud of smoke engulfed the two competitors, concealing their conditions as the crowd erupted from the edge of their seats. Suddenly, the lightning armor exploded outwards, lighting the field in a burst of electricity that tore up the ground. With two heavily bleeding wounds, it was obvious who had won when an abrupt agonizing scream echoed through the arena as the smoke cleared and revealed a heavily bleeding Jiro clutching a hole in his chest. The Team Kumo Nin was already swaying, a clear sign of his fading consciousness. With his clothes scorched and his arms left exposed, Sasuke stood across the field panting heavily, using Forsaken as support because the powerful technique's electrical charge had left his motor skills somewhat disoriented. I should have known you Kumo. Nin had some discharge technique with that Nintaijutsu. Makes sense if you're in a sticky situation, Sasuke said, gesturing to Forsaken. Unfortunately for you, Jiro finally passed out from his wounds, and Sasuke grinned and said, I win. Venus. S-U-S-U-K-E Uchiha. With a triumphant expression, Serutobi turned to face E and grinned, saying, I think you owe me 3S. Rank missions rakage. Dono. I expect them by the end of the month. But I do think you ought to follow up with your pupil. He had some pretty serious wounds. The rakage simply scoffed, showing no concern at all for his student. Jiro's defeat was only the result of blood loss and being outmatched. Both he and his brother had previously delivered much more severe beatings to Jiro and his allies, all without causing any skin damage. Jiro will recover in no time, but the next match is what interests me. I've heard rumors that Gara is soon as Jinchuriki for Ichibi no Shukaku, one. Tailed Shukaku, but how will he fare against Yugido? I'm sure Yugido has the upper hand in regular shinobi combat, but what about demonic? Which of them has greater control over their inner demon? Turning back to Serutobi, he addressed the preceding query. Regarding the missions, I promise to deliver them to you within the next few days. He's planning something, Serutobi thought, merely nodding his head in acknowledgement before turning back to the arena below. But not before he stole a quick peek at his betrayed pupil. The crowd erupted in celebration of Konoha's victory over Kumo, even though the fight had been fairly won. Sided from the start. After their warm. Up. Sasuke had destroyed Jiro with strong tactics, never once pausing to talk, as many shinobi regrettably have a tendency to do. 
He demonstrated to the judges his talent in all branches of shinobi combat, including genjutsu, taijutsu, and ninjutsu, all supported by well. Thought Strategies and Tactics It was a spectacular fight, and the spectators could still see the fight's aftermath throughout the arena. Scorch marks from the flames and lightning, deep gouges in the walls from their battle that defied gravity, and even the feathers from Sasuke's area illusion, though they were black rather than white. The Nirvana Technique, or Nehon Shoja no Jutsu, is a technique. The crowd felt a wave of drowsiness as different shinobi realized they were under a genjutsu. Before they knew it, all of the civilians and low level shinobi were in a deep sleep, totally unaware of the terrible battle that was about to happen. They wouldn't know that the entire village had turned into a battlefield, that every shinobi was moving and fighting, that lives were already being taken, that the clash of metal against metal with blasts from the elements resounded throughout the village, but one person was unaware of all of this. This one person failed to witness Gara leap into the arena and crush three Konoha Chunin with his sand. They also missed the enormous fireball that was thrown at Gara in return. They missed Kakashi and Sasuke charging up their Chidori, Thousand Birds, and shattering their target's heads. They missed Sakura using her strength augmentation to crush an auto. Nin's skull with one hand. They missed Haku sending Ice Senbon into her enemy's hearts. They also missed the enormous summons that materialized to the north or the flying black. Winged angels that entered the battle, wreaking havoc in their wake. No, was the unambiguous message for all Konoha shinobi. The invasion was underway. All thoughts, all senses, everything seemed to slow down and fade into the background, but then Naruto felt it, the very instant he had dispelled the genjutsu, a familiar spike of volatile and powerful chakra, a chakra so deadly that its very essence burned any unfortunate soul that touched it a chakra that was familiar and something Naruto had sorely missed. Naruto never even noticed Nightmare and Ashbringer standing on either side of him, all he saw was the woman he had fallen in love with, the woman he had given up on, and the woman who, even now, despite his belief that he had actually gotten over her, pulled at his heart and soul, both of which cried out for her to accept and return his feelings. Naruto was already in his mindscape, standing on the grassy field as he stared at lush crimson hair, scantily clad hourglass figure, and those breathtakingly beautiful eyes that shimmered with tears and guilt. Haku was his girlfriend, the girl he had sworn to give his all to when he decided to give up on the goddess standing before him, and he was betraying her for thinking of all this, even when she was fighting outside for her life, friends, village, and him. Then he heard it. The voice that shattered every idea he had before, the voice of the woman who had been missing for more than a month. Naruto. Kun. Mei. Haim. Evacuate the stadium. Screams of panic filled the stadium, turning it into a horrific battleground. High-ranking shinobi engaged in combat with numerous adversaries who had taken on the appearance of commoners throughout the village. The few low. Ranking shinobi woke up fast, gathering as many civilians as they could and escorting them to evacuation points while protecting them from stray attacks. Luckily for them, the overwhelming forces of the enemy, which seemed to consist mostly of Suna and Otto, Nin, were more afraid of the powerful Chunin, Jonin, and Anbu forces than of directly attacking them. Not only the stadium, though, the entire village had turned into a combat zone. Though hundreds, if not thousands, of enemy forces had been eliminated by the numerous traps lining the forests outside Konohagakure, the numbers remained high. Even as the great gates of Konoha were broken down, allowing the first wave of invaders, comprising Tokubetsu Jonin and Chunin, to charge in, enemy infiltrators dressed as civilians had quickly used summoning scrolls to bring in whole squadrons of adversaries. There were battles going on all around, leaving behind weapons and evidence of ninjutsu, and enormous clouds of smoke rose above the village. Massive summons that swiftly started destroying everything in their immediate vicinity were revealed when these enormous plumes of smoke cleared. With the intention of saving their village from the perilous summons, Anbu and the elite Junins lunged forward. Numerous lives had already been lost in the battle, and it was horrifying to see so many corpses lying around the village. The three cages had started an amazing battle that shook the stadium with their individual powers up on the stadium roof. 4. Auto Nins had summoned a barrier that prevented anyone from entering or leaving its boundaries, so it was impossible to tell who was fighting whom, though the Anbu who were nearby could see that two of the cages were teaming up. If their suspicions were correct, that Orochimaru was really the case cage, then all they could do was hope the rakage had taken their side. Swarms of low. Level demons appeared in the east, attacking, eating, and, in the unfortunate case of women, raping anything in sight. However, even as the battle raged on, deadlier forces were being awakened, 
and they were soon confronted by the deadliest unknown force of Konoha. Yugure, Twilight. The combined strength of two divisions quickly destroyed half of the demon swarm. One of the Yugure wearing black moved forward as the enemy forces withdrew in fear. We are Yugur's 7th and 8th division, I am the captain of division 7 and my name, is meaningless to you filthy demons. The rest of division 7 appeared beside their captain with swords slowly sliding back into their sheets with a slight clink, HRYYAHHH. The demons cried out as their bodies suddenly exploded with blood. Before the grotesque creatures could even bristle and take offense at the Twilight Captain's insult, it was Yuger's responsibility to eliminate any strange or extremely dangerous forces that might endanger Konoha or, in rare cases, the entire shinobi community. The demons never had a chance or even anticipated the attacks since they knew precisely how to dispatch these strange creatures. This is how the 7th Division defeated over 50 demons in a matter of seconds. This was Yuger's power, Twilight's power, and woe be to those who dared challenge them. One red. Haired shinobi in the stadium lost it as the bodies piled up and the blood started to pool. The sight of so much blood was breathtakingly gorgeous. He was called upon by the abundance of that magnificent liquid that gave life. Mom desired everything. He desired everything. Gara had leapt into the arena before anyone could react, landing on an unsuspecting Junin who instantly turned to sand as the moisture was forced out of his body. A group of charging chunin were impaled by the grey sand that had once been a proud Konoha shinobi with a single hand seal. Gara heard their screams as blood flowed from their wounds, covering the sand skewers holding them. It hurt because of the sand itself as much as the fact that they were impaled. It had gnawed its way into their bodies, spreading inside to inflict more agonizing harm. Certainly. Please give me your blood. Mother is starving, mother want your blood. Gara cried out, his eyes taking on a crazed, insane expression. Sabaku Q, Sand Binding Coffin. Suddenly, the sand burst and encased the three chunin in a tight prison. With a menacing smirk, Gara balled his fist and ignored their cries for assistance. Sabaku Soso, Sand Waterfall Funeral. Gara turned and faced the stadium full of shinobi engaged in combat as the sand suddenly burst, splattering blood all over the place. Who's next? Come. I will feed you all to mother. Gara's challenge was swiftly met with the death of five chunin by the dozens of sand tendrils that slashed out at any unlucky shinobi within range, no matter which side they belonged to. As more and more Konoha shinobi emerged to confront the unsteady Jinchuriki, they were crushed or flattened by the one. Tailed Shukaku's arms made of sand with blue veins. At the touch of the Jinchuriki, any shinobi unlucky enough to avoid Gara's sand were withered away. Anbu destroyed an enemy with a fire technique, yelling, stop him. Focus your attacks and take him down. After defeating their opponents, three dozen Konoha shinobi united in strength, realizing that their individual efforts were futile, and focused their attacks on the furious Jinchuriki. Hundreds of kanai, shuriken, and fire techniques were launched toward Gara, who simply laughed as his shielding sand negated their attack despite the obvious danger. Weak. You're all so weak. Gara exclaimed as the earth in front of him abruptly broke apart into a jagged line. Spreading apart into the one. Tailed Shukaku's open mouth, both ends rose a hundred feet into the air. Suddenly, the two sides slammed together, swallowing everything and everyone who was unlucky enough to be present. With a menacing smile on her face, Gara touched the ground, trapping hundreds of shinobi and an entire section of the stadium inside Shukaku's mouth. Their cries went unheeded. Mesa Bakuso, ruining sand waterfall burial. Shukaku's face compressed so intensely that everything inside was instantly crushed to nothing as the region plunged dozens of feet into the ground. Sand was all that was left. Yes. Prove my existence. This was his desire. He was happy and his mother was happy. How tasty the blood is. The agonized screams. It was truly amazing. Gara looked around roaring angrily at the lack of victims, but then there was silence. He required additional blood. More demise. With the idea that he needed more, the Jinchuriki raced through the stadium's damaged area, determined to quench his bloodlust. Sand claws shot up from the earth, crushing even bystanders who were fleeing Gara's carnage until. Kaden. Goenka no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Flame Flower Technique. Suddenly, six enormous fireballs descended onto the ground where Gara stood, destroying any unlucky shinobi in the blast. 
Gara was staring at the person who had dared to attack him when the entire area burst into flames, shattering the thin layer of glass that had formed from the intense heat and turning all nearby buildings to ash. The attacker or attackers could only scowl at the sight of a sphere of sand that had shielded the Jinchuriki from harm. Sand started to crawl up his left side, forming armor that reminded him uncannily of the Shukaku. He narrowed his eyes. You. Yes, me. Let's try that again, the assailant exclaimed, blending in with the seals. Kaden. Goenka no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Flame Flower Technique. Sakura and Kakashi, accompanied by Zabuza, Haku, and a Janin named Aoba, were tearing through the invading forces in a different part of the stadium while attempting to defend Naruto, who hadn't moved since the invasion began. Sasuke had left right away for the south, claiming to have corrupted souls, so they had no idea where he was. Sakura's rage was further heightened by the fact that she was unable to employ a large portion of her extensive ninjutsu skill set, mostly fire techniques, because Reiko now had that elemental talisman. With only one element available due to the lack of nearby water sources and her inexperience with earth techniques, she became irritated. Her other available elements were lightning, earth, and water. Sakura naturally had a lot of lovely things to say about Naruto's perfect timing as a result of this. You stupid, idiot. You fucking moron. What are you doing? Of all the half. Asked times to enter your mindscape, you pick now. Why are my best friends always scatter? Brained. At least Ino had an excuse because of her bloodline techniques, but you don't. And you knew about the invasion so why did you go into your mindscape? Sakura screamed as she kicked to fingertips. She was deflecting the projectiles away from herself and her allies with her magnetism techniques. It goes without saying that her skills were terrifying both her allies and her opponents. The pinkette, her hand cackling with purple electricity, gestured at a group of charging shinobi as she turned over a couple hand seals. Raiden. Jiki, Yurajiri, Lightning Release, Magnetism, Betrayal. As their blades shot backwards and stabbed their one. Time wielders, the opposing shinobi let out a sudden cry. Their stunned expressions would never fade as Kakashi used his lightning chain attack to finish them off. The Silver. Haired Junin looked back at his student and said, Naruto knows how critical the situation is. Whatever the issue may be, he'll be back soon. He then threw three auto. Nin shuriken at them. Sadly, two of the auto. Nins managed to deflect the shots, and Kakashi was soon fighting hand. 2. Hand with them. The kanai of his opponents flashed inches from his neck, and he cursed. He really did pick a real bad time to zone out. Sakura was about to finish when a barrage of shuriken struck, but to the surprise of the assailants, the projectiles abruptly stopped in midair. By the way Kakashi. Sensei, I got 60. Raiden. Jiki. Jiken Toketsu. Lightning release. Magnetism. Frozen time. Sakura glared at the violators and unleashed a powerful magnetic energy blast that sent the floating weapons hurtling backward. The weapons buried themselves into the Suna. Nin's bodies, leaving them with little chance of survival. Okay, that's three more so, Kakashi. Sensei. I got 19. Kakashi yelled back, that's it? I know I trained you better than that. You should be at 30 by now. Before dispatching his opponents with a few kanai and a sharingan. Enhanced genjutsu. Then he turned to face his pupil and struck a very arrogant pose. I'm at 40. 2. Not fair. Sakura exclaimed, gesturing to the seven shinobi that she and Kakashi had eliminated together. I helped you kill them. They don't count. Yes they do. Now they don't. We both killed them. Kakashi gave an eye roll. After three shuriken, two more auto. Nin were slain at the feet of the elite Junin, saying, fine. 30. Fi. Wait. Make that 30. 7. Fuck you. Haku yelled, Zabuza. Sama, gesturing to the opposing student and teacher as she transformed them into ice sculptures and pincushions. That is your fault. Being the demonized, bloodthirsty monster that he was, Zabuza just laughed proudly at his ability to use his bloodlust to corrupt others. The swordsman, while he skewered four shinobi with his blade, only encouraged them further with his exclamation, Ha! Huh? You're both pathetic. 40. 8. Fortunately for Zabuza, Sakura and Kakashi responded to his declaration with increased efforts against the enemy forces.
Even though their kills were swift and precise, the demonic swordsman's ferocity seemed to have increased after his trip through the first and second circles of hell. As he unleashed Hellreaver on the invading forces, his blindfolded eyes glowed like hellfire, his killings growing more and more brutal. Even worse, Zabuza occasionally skipped using the bladed edge, as if he wanted to inflict pain on his opponents. The unfortunate victim received a blow to the side of his chest, just under his left armpit, which completely broke his rib cage, crushed his lungs, and sent multiple pieces of bone in his heart flying into the other. His body caught fire, emerald, and he drowned in his own blood. The gore didn't bother the former demon of the mist in the slightest, of course, and he smirked proudly at his creation before carrying on with his slaughter. The majority of Haku's targets, in contrast to her master, were still alive but either unconscious or in a state similar to death. The ice. User had hurt them enough to stop them moving, even if they managed to wake up. Sadly, her boyfriend had not moved since the invasion began and was in a somewhat similar state. Other than feeling a strange, strong chakra emanating from him, she had no idea what was going on. What on earth could Naruto? Kun be up to at this hour? She questioned as she deftly deflected a sidekick and then stopped the man in retaliation. She saw, out of the corner of her eye, Gara defending himself against six enormous fireballs. Despite not being able to see the assailant, even from her position on the stadium roof, she chose to seize the chance to knock the Jinchuriki unconscious while he was preoccupied. She would need to use something strong enough to cut through Gara's sand despite withstanding the scorching heat of the inferno. Hayaten. Bayaku. Kaya. The brunette was about to finish the technique when a powerful gust of wind knocked her back. Luckily, there were no walls for Haku to run into, and she was able to quickly reorient herself. The ice. User landed softly on her feet and glanced up at her assailant. Even as she readied herself for an attack, she was definitely taken aback by who she saw. You're afraid of him, yet you still protect him, the bond between siblings is quite strong, right, Tamari? San? The Suna Kunoichi just grinned, although she was unable to mentally dispute Haku's assertions. Tamari said with a flourish, your attacks would catch his attention. And when he attacks? Well, I kinda enjoy living. She also sent a light gust into the air. Haku leapt above her in a flash of speed, her arm swinging down toward her face. Besides, it's only a matter of time before Gara kills the shinobi he's fighting and I want to have a little fun before he massacres everyone else. Tamari was knocked back by an unexpected kick to the face, and sparks flew as needles held in a claw. Like manner slammed into her battle fan. After the attack, she was kicked off the roof with a senbon piercing her thigh and receiving a painful curse. Tamari quickly recovered and was about to unleash a fierce gust of wind with her fan when a hail of icicles hurtled toward her, causing her to reposition and abort her attack. With a swift move, Haku took advantage of the fall and charged forward, saying, I'm not going to let you use any more of your futon ninjutsu. The ice. User materialized next to her in an instant, prepared to use needles to rid her opponent had the kunoichi not employed a cunning combo involving bunshin and kawarimi no jutsu. Sadly, Haku didn't let up, so she didn't escape the attack unharmed. Three senbon were protruding from her shoulder and back. The ice maiden attacked with a barrage of lightning. Fast jabs and slashes, each intended to further disable and incapacitate the Suna. Nin before they could react. With her fan reinforced with chakra, Tamari was forced to backpedal clumsily, barely able to defend herself. For Tamari, it was the worst possible matchup. Unlike the fan. Wielding Kunoichi, whose area ninjutsu required build. Uptime, the Ice Maiden specialized in speed and precision. Additionally, every time she attempted a technique, she betrayed her intentions by using such a large battle fan, giving Haku all the warnings she needed to avoid or, in this case, outright attack and stop her movements. It's not how I fight. Tamari swore in her head. She was too slow to parry Haku's blows more than once, and before long, she had small cuts all over her arms, sides, and legs. Her ability to fight back was diminished with each wound, and she was barely managing the increasing pain. Tamari roared, damn it. Get away from me. And pushed on her makeshift shield, surprising Haku and giving the Suna. Nin enough time to use ninjutsu. Daikamaitachi no jutsu, great sickle weasel technique. Exclaimed the blonde as she watched with satisfaction as Haku was blasted backward by a powerful blast of slicing air currents, sending her with bone. Jarring force crashing into a nearby building. 
As she fell to the ground, the Ice Maiden let out a cry from the impact, already experiencing pain from her broken ribs, and her body broke apart into ice. Temeri's gaze expanded. Shit. Bunshin. However, it was a nice try, a voice behind her remarked. Tamari turned and hit the air with her fan. Whoa, where's she at? So that's how you want to play this? You underestimate me! exclaimed the blonde Kunoichi, swinging her fan around and taking advantage of the opportunity to build up chakra and air for one of her best moves as a dense mist descended over the area, obstructing Temeri's vision. In an attempt to stop her, dozens of ice senbon shot out in all directions, only to shatter against the vortex that now swirled protectively around her. The heat from the surrounding fires, the mist in the air, and the wind created by her fan all rose into the sky above them, all expertly controlled by the blonde. Afterwards, the clouds darkened, turning into storm clouds. Haku observed the gathering clouds overhead as they grew larger from her hiding place. I can't let her finish, even though I have no idea what she's doing. Channeling chakra into her legs, Haku launched herself into a dead sprint, transforming into a blur as she appeared intermittently, slashing at any unlucky enemies in her path. When she stopped, none of them remained standing, and she was ready to turn Tamari into a pincushion, but... A huge tornado roared into existence, tearing up the surrounding buildings and uprooting the earth, saying, you're too late. As it moved toward her opponent, who had fled quickly. Dazen Fukoheki, Great Fan Wind Roaring Wall. Hayaden. Hayakai, Ice Release, Frozen Sea. Haku's mouth erupted in a tsunami wave of snow and ice, trying to counter Temeri's tornado. Haku had struggled for the most of the month to learn how to replicate Miyuki's method, but in the end, she had been successful. The method made it harder for her opponents while simultaneously providing her with an abundance of water and ice that she could use for other techniques. It was far too useful to throw away. Haku was able to perform the technique in any weather because of her bloodline, unlike Miyuki, who most likely had the snow and ice stored in her sword. Regretfully, neither Tamari nor Haku anticipated the result of their respective techniques colliding. A loud roar erupted as the two elements of wind and snow collided. Then, to the surprise of their creators, they started to merge. As the winds picked up speed, the quickly spinning winds carried the frozen water into the clouds above. The temperature dropped into the negatives and soon the storm clouds over them covered a square mile of the village. Howling winds swept through the streets, bringing with them snow, hail, and water in torrents. They had created a blizzard. A snowstorm much bigger than Naruto's own abilities. The sudden winds had knocked down dozens of shinobi nearby, and now they shivered from the extreme cold, some even had frostbite. Haku and Tamari, the creators of the howling blizzard, stood right in the middle of it, both of them shocked by what they had brought forth. They had no idea that the combination of their attacks would result in this. Fortunately, Temeri's close proximity to the fires left by Gara's attackers and Haku's bloodline shielded both Kunoichi from the effects of the clothes. She was lucky that the infernos kept her warm enough to withstand the bitter cold. Otherwise, she would have been freezing, just like everyone else. They both remained motionless, uncertain about their next move. After all, if these attacks could produce blizzards, what about their most effective strategies? Or was it just those two particular methods that could be combined? And would the blizzard affect their other attacks? They would soon discover. Haku leapt back onto the roof, her hand raised to the clouds above, her fist slowly tightening. Without delay, the precipitation turned into massive ice chunks, causing the temperature to plummet even more. All of the Konoha defenders were unharmed as the blizzard that turned into a hailstorm crashed down onto the planet, killing numerous enemy shinobi in the area. This snowstorm, this icy tundra, was Haku's territory. She could control all the snow and use it any way she pleased because of her bloodline. With a single gesture, snow and ice suddenly clustered together to form a massive ice dragon, by far the biggest one Haku had ever created in her best technique. I'm sorry Tamari. San. But the fight is mine. With a shrill roar, the ice creature charged toward Tamari, determined to wipe out the Kunoichi even as she raised her fan to counter with her own ace. Hayaden. Bayakuriyu Bofusetsu, Ice Release, White Dragon Blizzard. It cried. Fujin Shuden, Wind God Rising to the Heavens. Four tornadoes swirled into existence, leaving scars on the ground as they howled toward Haku's Ice Dragon after she swung her battle fan four times. As they attempted to overpower one another, the ice and one of the tornadoes collided with a deafening crash, amplifying the already powerful winds in the area and Temeri's skill. 
The area was showered with shards of ice. The two techniques battled for a few seconds before the Ice Maiden's technique finally prevailed. It looked like Haku was going to prevail, but Tamari was too close to avoid and unable to change course, so she would lose control of her technique and then, boom. Suddenly, the four tornadoes collided, merging into a single, enormous multi. Vortex Tornado With the exception of Gara and his opponents, everyone who was unlucky enough to be in the way was struck down as the ice dragon broke apart and sent huge chunks of ice flying everywhere. Haku exclaimed, sounding unusually angry as her technique mixed with her opponents once more. Oh come on! Again? She disappeared into an ice mirror, out of the destructive path of the tornado, and then she reappeared above the clouds. With the intention of using the hailstorm as cover for her attacks, the Ice Maiden then readied herself for another attack. Hyaden. Sabama Fubuki, Ice Release, Swallow Snowstorm. Thousands upon thousands of ice needles flew with deadly accuracy at Tamari. But with a single fan swing, Suna Kunoichi destroyed them before they could even get close. Haku thought to herself, seems like our weaker attacks won't combine, and as she landed on the stadium roof, she created a large spear of ice. She had to exercise caution because, although it had shrunk significantly after colliding with the ice dragon, Tamari was no longer able to control the tornado. Sadly, strong winds were maintaining the natural disaster even in the absence of any remaining chakra, and they were also changing the path of her attacks. With a well. Time swing, Tamari broke the thrown ice spear, yelling, you'll have to do better than that. Haku couldn't have interrupted her tactics by crossing the great distance between them, leveling the playing field. Furthermore, because she was on the ground, she was not impacted by the strong winds that were beating her opponent from above. She kept a safe distance from her opponent while deftly dodging the hail of ice senbon and unleashing fierce gusts of wind in return. When Haku charged in, Tamari thought, there's no way I'm letting her get in close again. Daikamaitachi no Jutsu, Great Sickle Weasel Technique As he ducked under errant ice chunks, a nearby auto. Nin exclaimed, what the hell are they? Seeing two young Kunoichi who could really create tornadoes, hailstorms, and blizzards was terrifying. What will happen next? Lightning. Producing tempests? Watch out. Shit. They're about to use ninjutsu again. Everybody move. The warning was heeded, and dozens of shinobi quickly left the area. As gusts and ice flew in all directions, the environment around them grew worse with each attack that the two traded. All the buildings in the area were being destroyed by tornadoes, and several feet of snow and ice had now fallen on the ground. To Haku's surprise, the three stars that were blazing on the battle fans suddenly started glowing with cackling blue electricity, saying, time to change things up a bit. Didn't think I could use another element, huh? Tamari chuckled, observing the shock and alarm on her opponent's face. I can't blame you for being surprised. A wind element with lightning element techniques, I'm one of the few shinobi out there with opposing elemental affinities. Since your ice and my wind keep combining, I figured it's time I tried a different approach. Raiden. Kyuden, lightning release, ball lightning. Wait. Don't. However, it was already too late. With each stroke of Temuri's fan, three little orbs of lightning shot toward Haku. Haku and Tamari quickly sought cover as the sky burst into lightning, sending bolts of lightning smashing into the earth with terrifying force. The Ice Maiden easily avoided the attacks and could only watch in horror as the electricity entered the storm clouds above. Sparks of thousands of volts struck any shinobi that had survived the hailstorm and blizzard. Haku, who had totally lost her cool, yelled, Damn it! What did you that for? Tamari took cover and could only stare fearfully up at the lit sky. I didn't know this would happen. You didn't know this was going to happen? You sent electricity into storm clouds. Well sorry. It's too late for that. Haku yelled as he avoided another lightning strike and hastily formed an icicle to launch it towards Tamari, who countered with yet another gust of wind. Damn it. Stop using techniques to counter. Do you want to make this storm worse? Just dodge it. One Konoha. Nin exclaimed, who the fuck are these people? As the sound of electrocutions filled the air, the Junin swiftly sought cover in a nearby structure while he observed the two Kunoichi who were able to unleash natural disasters continue their battle and wreak havoc throughout the surrounding area. No one was safe while these two girls fought for their countries. Waves of snow crashed toward the streets only to be blown into tornadoes or hurricanes by gusts of wind. Lightning struck the earth with terrifying force. Blizzards and below. 
Freezing temperatures caused anyone unlucky enough to be in the area to freeze and die. From his position as his student's hostage, Sarutobi sighed, Orochimaru. I knew it was you. Four Jonin had formed a barrier that trapped them in the wreckage, and Sarutobi mentioned that he, the powerful, dark. Skin Shinobi, was in a similar predicament. Two obviously formidable shinobi were his captor, or captors, in this case. One was a sick. Looking man who had a bone knife clamped around E's throat. His ties to the Kagaya clan were indicated by his green eyes, white hair, and red dots. The other person was a tall man with orange hair, but there was something genuinely unsettling about him. Despite having a portion of his body covered in dark gray, including the mutated right arm that was holding the rakage in its massive grasp, he was laughing hysterically. My apologies for your unfortunate predicament rakage. Dono, I wasn't sure where your allegiance lied in this invasion. Though enraged by the circumstances, he could find no fault with the senior Hokage. The rakage might have accepted and taken part in the invasion if it had been any other country, but Kumo and Konoha had a shaky relationship. But because of Orochimaru's horrific crimes, which included kidnapping and killing thousands of civilians and shinobi for scientific experiments or just plain fun, he firmly sided with the Hokage and was prepared to stop Orochimaru at any chance. We are Shinobi Serutobi, I cannot blame you for your precautions. I only wish we weren't in such a predicament. With a nod of acknowledgement, Serutobi returned his focus to his erstwhile pupil. To think you've fallen so far, Orochimaru, you were a Sanin of Konoha and respected throughout the village. And yet now, you seek to destroy it. What for? Orochimaru gave a chuckle. He turned to face the Sandaim Hokage, not in the slightest bit worried about being attacked by his hostages. What do you think Serutobi? Sensei? My ambition. Imagine how different things would be had you simply let me continue my research. But none of you understood the genius behind my work. He exclaimed. Imagine, immortality. My experiments led us closer to perfection than anyone could ever hope to achieve. Konoha could have been invincible. And I. I would have been their leader. Their benefactor to true power. Again with that foolish goal. Do you still not understand that one could never be immortal in this world? He exclaimed, ripping off his robes to reveal armor resembling Yugers with a black face. Guard resembling the Nidame Hokage and a red leaf insignia. Because of your ridiculous pursuit, thousands of lives have been lost under your experiments, and now, you seek to destroy the very country that once held you dear. And for what? Revenge? You cannot crush Konoha nor will the High no Ishi, will fire, ever be extinguished. Orochimaru ridiculed, taking off his case cage disguise entirely. Ku ku ku, are you truly so naive sensei? The god of shinobi. The professor. Despite your titles, you are nothing but an old fool leading a broken village at the end of its pathetic existence, he said. With a gesture towards his two subordinates, the rakage was freed and leapt to Serutobi's side right away. I will not only crush you, but I'll make sure to destroy every single one of Konoha's citizens. Their lives, the lives of all your shinobi and civilian will be exterminated. Know that it was your failure that led to Konoha's destruction sensei. Such hatred is unbecoming of you Orochimaru, it will get you nowhere. Spoken like a true senile old man. Do you truly not understand sensei? This is more than simple hatred, this village shunned my work. I was striving for immortality. To ensure that the lives of Konoha would never fall. It would grant us the ability to master every technique ever created, learn every secret the world holds, we'd be invincible. But still, they scorned my work. And for that, they will reap the consequences of their actions, complete obliteration. Not just by my hand but by my associates. True devils of the abyss, fallen angels. A cruel smirk formed across Orochimaru's pale face upon seeing the Hokage's startled reaction to the Daidenshi. But, since I've taken a sideline perspective, I can see all of Konoha's crimes. Do you not think that my actions would be doing the shinobi world a justice? I've seen your tears for the Jinchuriki, the very people of this village attacking a helpless child for merely having something thrust into him at birth shows the value of this so. Called Honorable Village. Oh, and did I forget to mention that the one suffering the abuse is the Yandaimi's son? Even with that delicious power he now holds with his teammates, the village continues to scorn him. Minato would be disappointed. Don't you dare continue Orochimaru. Do you think I am ignorant to the misdeeds of my village's people? 
Do you think I feel no remorse at the pain Naruto must suffer for saving our village? Sarutobi pleaded. His eyes were blazing with rage, and the surrounding area could almost feel the weight of his imminent murderous intent. A chilling chill ran down the spines of everyone who saw the elderly man who was genuinely radiating chakra and loved peace. The amount of raw chakra his fellow cage possessed surprised even the rakage. Rakage. Dono, unfortunately, I must ask you to fight Orochimaru's subordinates. I must be the one to kill my former student. E gave a nod. We will be having a serious talk after this is over Serutobi. But for now, I will comply with your request, just be sure to land a few hits for me. He's killed hundreds of my shinobi. Serutobi grinned. Do not fret my friend, I will make sure he pays the price of his crimes a hundredfold. Foolish, you think you can defeat me sensei? You're nothing more than prey, I will destroy you in this pathetic village. And as for the rakage, Orochimaru looked at the man with a dark complexion. My deepest apologies for not introducing your captors, Rakage. Dono, please welcome two of my strongest subordinates, Tenden no Jugo, Jugo of the Scales, and Kimimaro Kagaya. The two auto. Nins had been using their enhanced abilities from the Curse Seal to keep the Rakage on edge, and they had quickly engaged E in close combat. The two Jonin were on level with E's own elite shinobi, possessing the ideal blend of raw power and fast speeds. The rakage sufficiently distracted, Orochimaru turned to confront his old sensei. Now Serutobi. Sensei, shall we? It's time I destroy the backwash village Minato gave his life and son for. With rage, Serutobi yelled, Orochimaru. The Hokage unleashed his fury, forming and finishing full seal sequences in less than a second. The symbols of a massive pocket dimension Fuinjutsu suddenly glowed around Orochimaru courtesy of Jiraiya making sure his own ninjutsu didn't damage the building. Since your attack on Naruto. Kun and his team, I have known of the invasion and have prepared accordingly, your arrogance has led to your downfall. Doden. Yomi Numa, Earth Release, Swamp of the Underworld. Beneath Orochimaru's feet materialized a vast and profound, due to the seal, swamp that sucked him down into its depths at frightening speeds. The snake Sanin, however, was unfazed. He had witnessed his fellow Sanin employ this tactic several times and knew exactly how to respond, so he kept grinning mockingly until he realized that his sensei was far from done. He was going to show everyone why he was referred to as the god of shinobi. A few seconds later, Doden, Doryuso, Earth Release, Earth Flow Spears. And, Kaden, Ikoden no Jutsu, Fire Release, Flare Bomb Technique. Protruded from the swamp in clusters, Trying to skewer the swiftly moving snake Sanin as a downpour of fireballs ignited the muddy and highly flammable swamp. Serutobi grinned. Ikijigoku, hell on earth. A horrifying scream of agony reverberated through the stadium and roof, stopping all fighting for a moment as everyone turned to face the burning swamp. To think that the old Hokage had merged three techniques into one that could defeat armies in a matter of seconds. It was just amazing. The power and fluidity, the creativity, this was the kind of thing that the Anbu outside the barrier could only imagine. Such feats were only possible for the god of shinobi, the Sandame Hokage. Orochimaru couldn't have withstanded such a blow, surely? Stop acting and come out here, Orochimaru. I know that won't be enough to kill you. And sure enough, Orochimaru came out of the swamp quite a distance away unscathed. The swamp's copious amounts of mud had made it easy for the snake Sanin to clone himself and take his place. Ku Ku Ku. Not bad Serutobi. Sensei. Your skills remain quite impressive despite your senility. Now it's my turn. Orochimaru's unusually long tongue abruptly changed into a snake and lunged toward the elderly Hokage. Before the flames reached Serutobi, they were swiftly destroyed by his flamethrower, causing the snake Sanin to build an earth wall or risk being completely burned alive. The shield appeared to be holding at first, but Orochimaru soon realized that the attack would likely break through in a matter of seconds as the heat began to rise. He swiftly used substitution to escape, realizing that time was of the essence, and charged his sensei. Eventually, the two fighters collided in a fierce taijutsu battle, unleashing dozens of blows with strength and speed that would have stunned Gai and Lee into a youthful embrace. Serutobi and Orochimaru both had excellent skills despite their advanced age, blocking punches, deflecting kicks, avoiding elbow shots, and stopping knees with quick hands over the groin. Ultimately, though, the benefit was evident. 
With Orochimaru's greater speed and endurance, Sarutobi soon found himself clenching his teeth in agony after taking a stinging blow to the kidneys. Orochimaru delivered a powerful uppercut and landed a dozen more punches before he could react. Orochimaru drew a kanai and it swung toward the Hokage's neck as he fell back. Sarutobi shot out with another kanai, barely managing to raise his own to block. I found it quite satisfying when the blade made contact. Cursing, Orochimaru had to retreat when his opponent vanished in a flash of lightning. Although the injury was minor, barely more than a scratch, it was unacceptable that his sensei had been hit. Senei Jashu, Hidden Shadow Snake Hands Orochimaru's tongue changed back into a snake and clamped down on Sarutobi's neck, pumping the elderly Hokage's body with deadly venom. It was almost palpable how satisfied the betrayed shinobi was to see this, until the body abruptly collapsed into mud. The snake Sanin muttered, replacement. Orochimaru, Sarutobi uttered, stepping in front of his pupil. The snake Sanin ignored his seeming weakness and bided his time until his former master had the opportunity to speak. You wish to obtain through immortality the ability to master every technique, yet how will you accomplish this when there are dozens of new techniques created every generation? Konoha has recently obtained the skills of a true developer of techniques and has gifted the shinobi with his work. Now, allow me to show you the gifts of Konoha's creator. The earth and mud started to form. The snake Sanin watched the technique develop, completely taken aback as the figure grew larger and larger. Doden. Ganso no Jutsu. Chimi. Earth Release, Rock Formation Technique, Mountain Demon. This golem's features were much more defined than Sakura's. The rock structure had a mostly humanoid appearance and teeth and horns that protruded from different parts of its body like spikes. When it was finished being created, Sarutobi raised his hands in a single seal and grinned. Iku, go. The demonic golem roared and charged directly at Orochimaru, its earthly fist raised and ready to do more than just kill. Its goal was to eradicate. The Sanin was taken aback by the golem's unexpected appearance and swiftness, and before he could respond, the rock creature struck him hard in the jaw. Orochimaru staggered back, questions popping into his warped mind as pain flooded his body. Where did he get such a skill? His eyes grew wide as he remembered Kabuto's intel. Sensei claimed it was developed by Konoha's creator. I've heard rumors of such a developer. The Jinchuriki Kayubi. Did he create this method? A twisted smile flashed across his face. To make such formidable techniques. Without a doubt, he also created the ninjutsu Sakura. Chan and Sasuke. Kun Yuz. What delicious possibilities. Because of the invasion, he hadn't had a chance to see Naruto's recent advancements, but the snake Sanin had every intention of finding him later. First, though, the golem. Orochimaru showed why he was named that way by using his cunning to deftly avoid each dangerous swing. The construct would periodically shoot spikes at him, and Orochimaru was repeatedly in danger of being hurt by the fast. Moving projectiles. This is getting annoying, Senei Jashu, hidden shadow snake hands. More than half a dozen snakes emerged from his sleeve and encircled the golem. The snake Sanin rammed his palm into the golem's chest, immobilizing the construct. There was only one possibility left by the sheer force of the gale that was confined in such a small area between Orochimaru's hand and the golem. Futon. Daitopa, wind release, great breakthrough. With enough force to cause the barrier around them to shimmer, the creature was blown backwards at a rapid pace. The golem eventually gave out, but in the minute that Orochimaru had been fighting, Sarutobi had plenty of time to plan his next move. Doden. Doryu Taiga, earth release, earth flow river. Something enormous burst out of the swamp, a torrent of burning mud. Luckily for Sarutobi, the swamp that had been created at the start of the battle still erupted with fierce flames. Now was the time to use the resource. It suddenly split as it got closer to Orochimaru, who leapt back quickly because he didn't want to risk getting hit by burning mud. As the river followed Sarutobi's orders, he commanded, Rin, circle. Changing to a different seal. After completing its circuit, it turned into a light bulb and headed back to the swamp, where the sandame stood at the lone opening. With a wry smile on his face, Orochimaru turned to face his sensei, now encircled by a river of gushing mud that was ablaze. Do you truly believe this can contain me Serutobi? Sensei? He smiled back at her. Blurring through seals, Serutobi performed his technique. Always short. Sighted. 
you never were able to grasp the finer executions of ninjutsu. Allow me to show you what the professor can do. Doden. Doryuden, Earth Release, Earth Dragon Bullet. To Orochimaru's dismay, six dragon heads rather than the typical one emerged from the mud river surrounding him. The snake Sanin screamed in excruciating pain as they opened fire and threw hundreds of flaming mud projectiles at him. Because of his curiosity and conceit, Orochimaru was taking full advantage of his master's amazing combination technique, which involved encircling an enemy with a river and then attacking from all directions. He didn't have time to make a clone to replace him. A truly brilliant strategy, and the Sanin were fully utilizing its powers. The mud only served to aggravate the open wounds on his bruised skin, which he could feel was burning from the flames. The attack stopped after what seemed like an eternity but was really only a minute, leaving Orochimaru burned, bruised, and covered in blood. It was an ugly sight. I see you live up to your name Serutobi. Upon turning, the Sandame saw a bloodied rakage covered in his lightning release armor. Luckily, Serutobi could not discern any visible injuries and the blood did not seem to be his own. Peering past the bulky man, he saw the lifeless bodies of Jugo and Kimimaro. The rakage battleground was covered in a large number of craters and spikes that looked like bone. You didn't kill them. E gave a head shake. Both are high. Ranking auto. Nins, regardless of whether or not Orochimaru lives past today, they'll likely possess intel we need to take out any remaining bases and perhaps even rescue some of our kidnapped citizens. A wise decision rakage. Dono. Do you think your techniques were enough to kill him? Serutobi gave a head shake. I can only hope so, but it's unlikely. Orochimaru has always been a resilient one. A ferocious roar forced the two cages focus back on their adversary. Opening his mouth wide, the snake Sanin displeased Serutobi, E, the Anbu, and pretty much everyone else in sight when a distinct Orochimaru emerged from his mouth, slithering out of a snake. Like skin. The new Orochimaru stood before them, saliva and what looked like some sort of chemical dripping off its body, causing the original skin to go slack. The Sanin were ready, able, and full of rage because every wound they had previously caused had vanished. His face betrayed the deep hatred he felt for Konoha and its Hokage. Orochimaru then turned to face his teacher again, his expression grimacing, you defeated my henchmen. And with such ease. I underestimated your power rakage. Dono. As for you Serutobi. Sensei, did you truly think your techniques would be enough to defeat me? You were badly injured and had I moved sooner, you would be dead now. Yes, perhaps, but you didn't. You were expecting that last attack to finish me. I was optimistic, he said. Coo coo coo, yes, even I'll admit it was a good attempt. Why thank you. The mocking tone of Serutobi made Orochimaru laugh. Now tell me about that technique. You said it was the creator who developed it, it's Naruto. Kun, am I right? Though Serutobi did not reply, the answer was still obvious. Ku ku ku. This is amazing news. With such skill in crafting ninjutsu and having the fabled bloodline of angels, Naruto the angel of death. Exclaimed Sanin as the two cages were drawn outside by a golden white light that suddenly burst into the sky. Upon their arrival, they were met with a plethora of enormous summons, an immense blizzard charged with lightning, enormous waves of sand crashing into red and blue flames, and a brilliant white light clashing with a black light overhead. It goes without saying that the fight was amazing. Yes, just look at that power. Going head. 2. Head with the Daidenshi. It may not be Yami. Sama, but to be able to fight on par with any member of that fearsome clan is a feat of its own. With pride, Serutobi watched his surrogate grandson battle with all of his might. Naruto. Kun along with every other shinobi in Konoha bear the high no Ishi, will fire. That is how he is able to go up against the Daidenshi and that is why you will lose here today, he exclaimed. Spoken like a true senile old man. Even if I am, this senile old man has been dominating our battle since its beginning. The insult made Orochimaru frown. Not anymore, the pale shinobi said with a sly sneer. It's time to shift the balance back in my favor and present some old friends to you, Serutobi. Sensei. The Sandame Hokage quickly realized what his disloyal pupil intended and unleashed a fiery conflagration, but it was too late. Kachiyose. Edo Tensai. Summoning. Impure World Resurrection. No. The conflagration shooting from the Hokage's mouth burst into four times its normal temperature, a white. Hot attempt to prevent Orochimaru from finishing his move. 
To the surprise of both Cage, however, a coffin started to rise directly through the flames, protecting the Sanin while Orochimaru exclaimed, first. With great glee. Rakage. Dono. We must stop him. All right. He suddenly materialized next to Orochimaru, ready to decapitate the Sanin with his fist already flying. However, he was met with shock. Blood splattered all over his face and clothes as his arm went elbow deep into the victim's flesh and out the back. W. What? He exclaimed. The shock was so great that he was unable to even consider taking his arm off of that person's chest. The black markings started to fade and the protruding bones started to crumble. The shinobi who was offering himself as a sacrifice exhaled the last, rattling breath, satisfied that he had been able to protect his master. I. I exist. To serve Orochimaru. Sama, he said, leaving everyone stunned. There were looks of astonishment and surprise on the faces of the auto. Nins manning the barrier. Orochimaru yelled, Ku 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 ha 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 ha. Yes. You were a wonderful subordinate Kimimaro. As the man slid off E's arm and onto the ground. With a single swipe of his blade, Orochimaru forced the rakage to back off by pulling out Kusanagi. Thanks to you, the second has risen. Luckily for Serutobi and E, the undead summoning ended there. The next coffin refused to rise, even with Orochimaru's best efforts, but it didn't matter. The snake Sanin had the advantage once more. Orochimaru's sly smile widened as the coffin lids fell forward, revealing its contents, the undead forms of the Shodem and Naidame Hokage. With this, his wish to see Konoha burn would come true. For the snake Sanin, it was such a moment of victory, sweet retaliation, and satisfaction that someone had to give him the one technique he feared the most. Rasengan spiraling sphere the now shrieking snake sonin was struck in the torso by a blue orb of swirling chakra that had the force of a hurricane orochimaru was flung flying back by the sheer power of the legendary technique but before he could even hit the purple barrier enclosing them another rasengan spiraling sphere smashed into his face causing a flash of yellow light to appear in his path orochimaru exclaimed impossible as the attack tried to melt his head Half a second after the second Rasengan connected, Orochimaru used his body. Shedding technique, only made possible by pure luck and years of finely tuned reflexes. Even though he sustained some injuries from being part of the attack during his escape, he was in much better shape than he had been previously. Though only two shinobi in the world were aware of the Rasengan, only one of them was able to execute the Hiriishin no Jutsu, flying thunder god technique, which was impossible. His mind was reeling from what he had just witnessed. He had passed away. Minato has passed away. In order to seal the Kayubi within his son, he gave his life. Therefore, how, how did you use those techniques? The two legendary techniques of the Yandaimi Hokage, who are you? The man with the black hood grinned behind his face covering. He rose to his full height, his left hand drawing a tri. Pronged Kanai, his right hand forming a Rasengan. With his hood pulled back, his fiery golden hair and deep blue eyes gleamed leaving all but Serutobi standing there in stunned disbelief. With a, sorry for the wait, old man, the enigmatic shinobi turned to confront Orochimaru and his summons of the undead. Hello there. My name is Yugure Commander, and I am the captain of Division 1 and the leader of Konoha's Yugure, Twilight. Orochimaru instantly found himself once more suffering at the hands of Yugure Commander's drilling force. Is Minato Namikaze. Even as Sakura buried a kanai into the skull of an auto. Nin, she joyfully exclaimed, Naruto. You're back. Next, a tick mark emerged on the pinkette's huge forehead as she pulled her teammate closer by grabbing him by the jacket. What the fuck were you doing in your mindscape? You knew about the invasion and yet you suddenly zoned out. I should beat you into the next center. The pinkette was rendered speechless and immobile as soon as Naruto locked eyes with her. The sapphire orbs held her gaze. His eyes were starting to glow white with the signs of Naruto's bloodline, and there was a gleam of pure determination and warmth around a sea of sadness. Sakura's heart, and lust, belonged to Sasuke, but she couldn't resist the pull they were pulling toward her. Her cheeks began to flush. Then he started talking. Sakura. Huh? Was her perceptive reply. Move. Naruto exclaimed, dragging the girl into his arms as he let go of his wings and hurled his holy blade at the group of Otto. Nin that had attempted to approach from behind. A wave of golden flames was unleashed upon the enemy as the blade, glowing with holy chakra,
crashed into the ground. Saidoryu. Tenmo, holy sword style, heaven's vengeance. They had no chance at all. Sakura whispered, a little ashamed that she was in the blonde angel's arms, Naruto. Kun. You can put me down now. After putting his comrade back on the ground, Naruto grabbed Tenyu and glanced around to see how the battle was progressing. Needless to say, it was not a pretty sight. His beloved village had become a vast battleground. Numerous dead shinobi and civilians were strewn across the streets, and buildings had been completely destroyed. The blonde angel could see Kakashi, Zabuza, and Aoba destroying any unlucky foe that came into sight to his right. He could see his girlfriend fighting one of the sand siblings to the north, and every time their powers collided, he somehow managed to create lightning storms and blizzards. Close by, the Ichibi no Shukaku's Jinshuriki engaged in combat with an opponent who was obviously skilled in using fire elemental techniques. From a great height, Naruto observed two Daidenshi wreaking havoc with their lineage. Where's Sasuke? With a shrug, Sakura punched an enemy shinobi through a building while using her strength augmentation. He ran off to the south saying something about corrupted souls, probably has something to do with Forsaken. What about the rest of Zabaza's group? No clue, but I overheard Shizuki saying that the invasion was the perfect opportunity to rip the tops off foreign Kunoichi, fucking pervert. Slicing off the arms of another enemy, Naruto sighed and said, damn right. He's as bad as Aero. Senen. He disregarded the man's cries as Sakura used a snapped neck to end his life. What about the other rookies? I haven't seen them since the invasion started. Shit, we need to find them. They don't stand a chance in this invasion. Sakura asked, glancing at the fighting ice maiden, what about Haku? Shouldn't you help her? The statement, no, she can manage herself, was accurate. Even when they combined their techniques, Haku still had the upper hand, and Naruto could tell Tamari was having trouble. Nor did the girl's situation get any better with the blood that had splattered all over the snow. Come on, we need to find the others. Kakashi. Sensei and Zabuza are more than enough for this area, in fact, I don't even see any more enemies. Sakura turns to look around and realizes her teammate was correct. Zabuza had just finished killing the last Otto. Nin nearby before escaping to look for more victims. Sakura crossed the village quickly, but she didn't miss Naruto's flinch. Okay, anyways, what happened to you? You went into your mindscape right when the invasion started. That's not like you at all. What happened, Naruto? And where did you get that crimson sword? Retrospective. Naruto. Kun. Neither Ashbringer nor Nightmare was there by his side. That voice was all that registered. To him, it was angelic music. The demon lord's sweet voice, Megetsu, Kayubi no Yoko, and the woman he loves, no, he had Haku now, but what could he say at this point? He couldn't leave the battle that was actually taking place to determine Konoha's fate, she was standing in front of him. She'd been gone for more than a month, but now she was back. The gates suddenly flooded open, and he was overcome with joy at seeing her again. Mei. Haim. How? Where have you been? He exclaimed. A month and nine days. That's how long you've been gone. Do you have any idea how worried I've been? How upset Hitomi was when her mother suddenly disappeared. Where were you? He seemed arrogant but was he concerned? Not at all. He needed to know why she vanished and why she parted ways with him. She looked at her vessel and tears started to well up in her eyes. He was so different from the academy. She saw a strong shinobi full of confidence and the skills to match it, not a frail teenager with grandiose ideas of strength and sufficiency. She was aware that the stress and chakra of shinobi caused accelerated growth, and that this effect was amplified in Naruto who was only 14, by the regenerative powers Megetsu bestowed upon her vessel, giving him a 16. Year. Old body. He had also developed mentally, opening her eyes to an infinite amount of possibilities. She'd spent the last month feeling everything Naruto had felt for her, the things she'd seen, the memories, the emotions. The amount of love he had for her and the suffering he endured were astounding. It was unbelievable, every moment of excruciating pain, every glimmer of unadulterated joy, all of it because of her, the Biju who has been the target of scorn and hatred for the past 12 years. How was she supposed to say, I? Naruto. Kun. Her deep well of sorrow and remorse was calling out to him. Only he could quiet the tempest. I'm so sorry Naruto. Kun, I should have known how you felt. 
How did he feel? What topic was she discussing? She seemed to know. No, how did you know? Ashbringer stepped up to explain when he noticed that Megetsu was too emotional to reply. She gestured to the vast forest behind her, saying, Naruto. Kun. When you changed your mindscape into this land, you also changed how you store certain memories and emotions. Simply put, each of the trees represents an emotion in regards to an event or person. In this case, a cherry blossom tree would represent love, and Megetsu discovered the one that expressed your feelings for her. By connecting herself to it, she was exposed to every memory, feeling, and thought you've ever had for her. When Naruto heard this, his heart fell. She is aware of it. This was not intended to occur. He was content with his decision to let go of his feelings for Haku. He was left alone by Megetsu, who also violated his privacy. Additionally, there remained the issue of her partner, Shizaru. Megetsu was still devoted to someone else, even if he did allow himself to be carried away by his emotions. It doesn't matter Mei. Haim, there's no need to apologize. How could he say it that way? B. But. Megetsu was a demon, yet she was aware of the pleasures and sorrows of love. How much had Naruto suffered because of his feelings for her? She knew. How could he brush her off and forgive her with such ease? Mei. Haim, you have Shizaru and I now have a girlfriend. There's no need for you to apologize. I shouldn't have fallen for you and even though I'm still in love with you, I'm also in love with Haku. Chan. This works out for both of us. Naruto said with a grin, even though his voice tight. You don't have to worry about my feelings anymore and I can fulfill my promise of reuniting you with Shizaru. I'm happy with Haku, Chan. Megetsu muttered, I. Naruto. Kun. She was aware that although Naruto had told the truth in most of his statements, he had also lied. Despite his developing feelings for Haku, Naruto still loved her and would always hold a special place in his heart. And, to tell it straight, he had a piece of hers as well. But. You're right Naruto, Kun. This is for the best. Sarcastically, Naruto nodded his head. He couldn't break, nor would he. But before you leave, just so we can both understand what it's like, Megetsu said as she walked up to her vessel, her stunning red eyes penetrating his very heart and soul. She threw her arms around the teenager and pressed her whole body against his. She sensed that he was returning the favor by encircling her body with his arms firmly and drawing her in. They both enjoyed the intimacy. It was blissful, warm, consoling, and made their hearts sing. He was aware of her next move. And he instinctively knew he had to put an end to it. Mei. Haim, I don't think. Before he could respond, Megetsu had her lips pressed to his, and it was pure bliss. I know. But just once. As they kissed, they could feel the love, passion, and happiness pouring into each other. Given the likelihood that this would never occur again, they both wanted, no, required, to treasure their union moment for as long as possible. They both moaned because it was so intensely passionate and hot. It seemed to last forever, but as with all good things, it had to come to an end. When they finally broke apart, tears ran down their cheeks, and their eyes showed how much they loved each other. They also let out heavy breaths. Even though they were betraying their loved ones, their intense feelings for one another overcame their guilt. I love you Naruto. Kun, I'm sorry it took so long for me to realize your feelings. It took so long for me to realize mine, but now I know, I love you and I always will. The tears kept falling. Me too Mei. Haim. A magnificent crimson sword appeared in his hand and said, here. The blade itself was a straight, single, edged katana, just like the Tenyu. The length of the blade bore black flame patterns that resembled Sasuke's cursed seal. Surprisingly, there was no handguard and a big ruby perched at the end of the black handle. This is my sword, the Gurren Kitetsu, Crimson Lotus Demon. Splitter. Combined with the Tenyu, Divine Grace, and the Mugetsu, Moonless Sky, your Santoryu is complete. Like the other swords, this blade will allow you to control our demonic chakra with more ease. After this invasion is over, I'll start teaching you some Matoryu, Devil Sword style, techniques. It's. Consider that sword as the first part of my apology for hurting you, Naruto. Kun. I wish I could apologize differently, but this is the best I can do. Before he could object, Megetsu had again pressed her lips against Naruto's, evoking a heartfelt but loving moan of desire from them both. I couldn't resist doing it once more, okay, go Naruto. 
Kun. We can talk more later. Naruto whispered, Thank you, Mei. Haim. I. I love you, before fading from the mindscape and nodding. I love you too. Naruto? The angel was quickly brought back to earth by Sakura's worried voice. Recalling what had transpired had caused a tear to fall down his cheek. It hurt, and it would hurt forever. But there was also happiness mixed with that pain. The Kayubi no Yoko was back, Megetsu. He couldn't possibly lose today. Just had a lot on my mind, I'm fine now, Sakura. Sakura just nodded as the two carried on their walk around the village, neither of them convinced but not wishing to ask questions. They were going to meet up with their missing teammate, and they knew exactly where he was thanks to the Pinket's chakra sonar. They could easily defeat the Daidenshi if they banded together. Sakura felt an incredibly strong chakra approaching them quickly after a few minutes. But instead of going after her, it was headed straight for Naruto, shouting, look out. The unwary blonde was struck by a black streak that fell from the sky and hit the ground. As Naruto attempted to recover from his attacker's strong and unexpected blow, blood spattered the ground. However, he soon discovered that he was being restrained. Even though he was face down and unable to see his opponent, he could tell who he was by the feel of his chakra. Daidenshi. Seigen Daidenshi smiled and pulled out his sword, utterly unaffected by the demonic energy emanating from his prisoner. He'd thrown back his hood so Sakura could see his face clearly. The man had a great jaw, amber eyes, and wavy brown hair. If it weren't for the ruthless and vicious smile on his face, he would have been quite the beauty. Glancing at the purple barrier where Orochimaru was fighting the rakage and his former sensei, the powerful shinobi scoffed, good guess. You owe me a fight Namikaze. I've been looking forward to our match in the Chunin selection exams this past month but Orochimaru and Kabuto just had to start the invasion early. He was unimpressed, even with the explosions and raging fires occurring inside. Even with his forbidden techniques, the slimy snake had no chance. But it's no matter, here we are on a true battlefield in the midst of a war. Now let's see whose bloodline is stronger. Shinin, Abyss, versus Tentai, Heavenly Body, a battle to the death. Seigen laughed as he raised his sword. Raiden. Jiki. Jiken Toketsu, Lightning Release, Magnetism frozen time. Stopped dead in its tracks, the black blade was only inches from Naruto's bare neck. Seigen was unable to move the blade even with his great strength. He glared at the person with pink hair, cursing. A foul chakra started to accumulate in his hand. Reiko wanted to be the one to kill you, but I think she'll just have to deal with the disappointment. How dare you stop my sword? You're going to pay for that. But before he could get back at him, Naruto slammed his elbow into Saigon's knee, allowing himself to get away and join Sakura. Many thanks, Sakura, sighed Naruto. You caught me off guard that time, it won't happen again. Seigen let go of his black wings and laughed. He aimed his sword at the enemy that his clan detested, and a swirling black chakra aura encircled him. I hope you're ready for this. My Shisui, clear autumn water, wants your blood. Naruto yelled, get ready, Sakura and charge. The two slashed swords against one another in an instant before taking to the skies. The two engaged in a lethal dance of swordsmanship, cutting and parrying every blow that was thrown at them until Naruto abruptly vanished from view. The blonde angel was able to dodge Saigon's guard by using the Rokushiki style, which allowed him to make quick, sharp turns and reappear behind him mid-swing. As the two fought for supremacy, the shinobi swiftly dodged the swing and, after reversing the grip on his sword, slamming his blade into Naruto's, showering him in sparks. They were staring at each other with fixed eyes as they pushed, each trying to outmuscle the other with strength but failing to gain any ground. After a few seconds, the two parted ways and soared above the village, appearing to the shinobi below as nothing more than blurry black and white images. Naruto twisted away from Saigon's sword thrust, slamming Tenyu up at the Daidenshi's ribs, only to have the blow miss and be met with an overhead strike right away. Unwilling to give up, Naruto growled and slammed his blade back in retaliation. As he kicked Naruto out of the way, Seigen sneered, not bad Namikaze. You've improved since your fight with that ice bitch. The Daidenshi swiftly materialized above Naruto's still. Descending form, charging after him and bringing his blade down. The hurriedly elevated block quivered under the force of Seigen's numerous blows, as he struck Tenyu with such force that shockwaves were visible. Dozens of shinobi, friend and foe alike, 
watched in dismay as the two angels descended from the sky toward Earth, an experience that was almost too painful to witness. Segan continued the attack, landing blow after blow, culminating in a rib. Cracking kick to his torso. Ha ha ha. Try again. Luckily, the blonde bounced back quickly after falling and tried a horizontal slice, but it was batted away. Unfazed, Naruto launched a rapid sequence of blows in an attempt to impale or at least hurt his opponent during the volley. However, it was in vain because Segan repeatedly swatted the blade away before retaliating. Naruto attempted to retreat in pain as a deep cut on his leg began to bleed, staining his pants. He swung his sword blindly in an attempt to put some distance between them, but the Daidenshi laughed and knocked it aside, making an exaggerated gesture that revealed Naruto's chest for a final strike. Naruto fought with triumph. Naruto spun around before Segan could capitalize on the opening, using the Daidenshi's parry, which had also left him wide open, as momentum to swing his sword, which glowed with signs of chakra just waiting to be released. Saitoryu. Dai Tenjiri, holy sword style, great celestial slash. A massive crescent of golden white chakra erupted from Naruto's swinging blade, moving too quickly for Segan to avoid, and his eyes widened. Well shit. Whack. The blinding light of the explosion burst against the black angel, lighting up the sky. Shinobi nearby were forced to cover their eyes from the explosion, but they secretly rejoiced at the seeming defeat of the Daidenshi. However, Naruto was aware of better, and when the light finally went out, he was not shocked to see Segan with a shallow cut across his chest and only moderately singe. The blonde angel was, if anything, irritated by how little the harm was. Not only was he not bleeding, Segan was about to tease Naruto about how ineffective his attack was when Sakura materialized above him, her fist raised with deadly intent. Shanaru. A cracking sound signaled the Daidenshi's descent into the earth, destroying a building as it did so. After the devastation, Naruto dove down and pulled Sakura out of her descent, sending a plume of dust behind him. Nice one, Sakura. Naruto exclaimed, embracing the girl with the green glow as they took off. They knew Segan wasn't out for the count just yet because he was just too strong, but that blow would have most likely temporarily caused him to see double. They were able to use that time to execute a tactical withdrawal and locate supportive allies. Even the rookies would be useful, even though they would rather have their own teammate because Naruto had taught them techniques that, if not enough for actual damage, would at least impair Saigon's mobility. Sakura muttered, I hope that punch gave him the mother of all headaches, turning off her strength technique in order to preserve chakra. Though she silently observed that the healing process was much quicker than it had been previously, she was relieved to see that Naruto's leg wound had partially healed. However, he possessed an abundance of chakra. Naruto smiled. I'm sure it did. You really can pack quite a punch. He, you know this from experience. Yes I would, bitch. Hey. You're the one who acted like an idiot. And that gives you the right to beat me black and blue? Yes. Oh, well, I was pretty stupid, but it still hurt. So fuck you. Sakura teasedly smiled as she concluded their conversation, saying, maybe later. I can see Neji and Tenten. Looks like they need some help. Since neither of them truly intended harm on the other, she always did enjoy making jokes about Naruto. When there was enough danger to warrant conversation, it always helped to diffuse the tension between the parties. As they flew down, they witnessed Neji and Tenten heroically fending off three chunin in an alley and emerging victorious. If not by much. With his juken, gentle fist, Neji was holding them back while his teammate, who seemed to have an infinite supply of weapons, provided cover. Although the strategy had worked so far, it was only a matter of time until the chunin overpowered them in some way. Sakura dropped to 15 feet with her fist clenched back, and Naruto let her go, not wanting to abandon their friends in such a situation. Neji had seen the two coming and had jumped back just in time to avoid the earth. Shattering impact thanks to his Baikugan. One enemy was instantly crushed by the blow, and the other two were thrown back by a shockwave. Neji had vanished from view and killed them with a swift blow to the heart before they could recover. Tenten exclaimed, Naruto. As she saw her teacher and friend soar. Thanks for the help. I wasn't sure how much longer we could have held them off. Yeah. I appreciate your help, Neji said, bowing. Fate was kind to have brought you to us. Naruto and Sakura, who were still perplexed by Neji's ramblings about fate and destiny, perspired at his actions. Luckily, it didn't seem like there were any enemies nearby, so they could talk for the time being. 
Naruto looked over at Tenten. Have you used it yet? The brunette gave a head shake. Not yet, I want to conserve my chakra. We have no idea how long this battle is going to last. Ignoring Sakura and Neji's perplexed looks, the blonde angel nodded. Good decision, because we're going to need just about every ounce of chakra you two have, is he moving yet Sakura? He'll be here in 10 seconds. Pulling out Mugetsu just in time, Naruto growled, shit. No time to explain. Bottom line is we're fighting someone as strong as a cage so stay on your toes. A maniacal Seigen appeared in front of him, his blade slamming against his own with such force that the ensuing shockwave knocked the others back. Naruto swung Tenyu in a vertical slash with a loud curse, but it was parried and returned with a stabbing thrust. The blonde lunged back, knocking the enemy blade away, turned, and cut the Daidenshi's arm slightly, but the two were soon rewarded with a kick, and they started trading blows. Nevertheless, Naruto saw it as a success because it was his first genuine hit. The battle had become much more equal because of Naruto's superiority at Naitoryu over Itoryu, especially since he could still use his legs for aka Ashi, Red Leg. Naruto struck with that adaptability at his disposal. The blonde plunged both of his swords into the earth before slamming his legs squarely into Saigon's chin. Naruto appeared above the Daidenshi, sending him flying and momentarily paralyzing him with a crushing axe kick and both swords swinging down tangent to each other. Planche a Decooper, cutting board. Seigen screamed in pain as he took the full blow because he was immobile. While the axe kick sent him crashing into the earth below, cratering the earth and leaving the Daidenshi moaning in agonizing pain, the two blades sliced clean through his armor and into his side, literally cutting open and filling it with blood. Blood had already started to collect in the crater, soaking his black wing's feathers, but it did nothing but dim his perception of death and invincibility, especially when he started to stand up. Naruto demanded, what the fuck is he? Tenten. Already on it. The brunette held Naruto's violin, which materialized in a cloud of smoke. It was the ideal gift for the aspiring weapon mistress in case her ammunition ran out or if she just wanted to fight more cautiously. The girl would have a nearly full tank when using the violin because the only chakra she used was for summoning and stamina. Tenten raised her bow, gave the fallen angel a sly smile, and began to play a song fit for a warrior. A fitting soundtrack to the battle taking place in the air started to play. It was blood. Pumping music. Dozens of melodic notes formed and filled the air as the melody went on. But not enough was present. Namikaze. Seigen was standing again. Seigen laughed and spread his blood. Stained wings, saying, you think these little baby scratches are enough to beat me? The Daidenshi appeared before the blonde angel in an instant, bringing down his powerful black blade. With such force, the blades collided, propelling Naruto backward just from the impact. Come on Namikaze. You can do better than that. With a curse, Naruto watched as Seigen flew after him, swinging so fiercely that he had to block and look heedlessly at Tenten, who was only now getting close to the first hundred chakra notes. Naruto was brought back to earth by a sharp pain at the gash the Daidenshi had made in his abdomen. Shit. She doesn't have the skill or chakra to create the numbers we need instantaneous. The blinding crescent of holy chakra slammed into Saigon's sword, pushing him back and giving Naruto time to turn toward Sakura, Neji, and two Kona Hachunin that had been drawn by the music. Ughh, damn it, get back. Saitoryu. Dai Tenjiri, holy sword style, great celestial slash. Hit him with everything you've got. We need to buy Tenten time. Hi. Oh, you're planning something, are you? Grinned Seigen, who had just come back from barely scraping the chakra wave. Even more unsettling was the Daidenshi's continued survival and combat readiness in spite of the still. Bleeding wounds that should have killed it by now. Who was he? What could you weak mortals possibly do to me? I'm a Daidenshi. Only demons, angels, and cages could hurt me. Sakura materialized beside him, her fist cocked back again, glowing green, as if to personally remind and respond to him. She grinned. Deja vu, hey, bye bye. Oh that's just not rig. Wham. Seigen felt excruciating pain as he fell toward the earth after the punch that rocked the planet. The Daidenshi's punch was so powerful that it broke multiple ribs in his left leg in addition to shattering his jaw before crashing through two buildings. Raiden. Jiki. Yurijiri, lightning release, magnetism, betrayal. Sakura's sadistic smile caused the blow to also knock Shisui out of his hand and freeze him in midair. 
Saigon's sword, sharpened by its master's bioelectric signature, descended quickly and pierced him straight through his stomach and into the crumbling debris beneath him. His mouth and the wound erupted with blood as he suppressed a cry of excruciating pain. Ah! Oh. Well, I'll own it. That hurt. Seigan growled and started to cough up blood. It really infuriated him to be impaled by one's own sword, and he was pinned as well. He gave Sakura a scowl. That's thrice you've hit and injured me, girl, I'm going to kill you. Where the hell is Reiko? She was the one who, what the? Ninpo. Gensokyoku, ninja art, Fantasia. Finally, Tenten was over. Chakra formed hundreds of notes that strewn the air. It was almost pretty, certainly something the kids would enjoy, but as with everything in the shinobi world, it was obviously meant to serve a far more sinister purpose. Gradually, they started to gather and rotate around the Daidenshi, ensnaring the adversary within an impeccable dome. The notes moved more quickly as the music played faster and faster. Faster and faster until, at last, it happens. The chakra struck with a single, forceful blow to her violin. There was no way out. An attack that swiftly and completely engulfed the adversary in foreign chakra. Hundreds of musical notes rained down on Saigon's already injured and immobile body, leaving him unable to defend himself. Taken apart, they would mean nothing. Seigan screamed, obviously, because the force behind each note was low chunin at best, multiplied by hundreds at every part of his body, including his groin. Sakura and Naruto glanced down to Tenten, who was already observing Neji with half. Concern. The other two chunin were waiting in case Seigan managed to withstand the attack. Tenten. Are you okay? Tenten grinned. I'm fine guys, I just used too much chakra. Tenten, you did fantastic, Naruto grinned as well. You'd better head to the hospital or the nearest evacuation site. This battle is far from over. No. I can still fight. What? Are you crazy? I can still fight. I still have some chakra left. I won't be left out from this fight. Naruto let out a sigh. Although she could see the brunette was determined, she knew she could easily lose this fight. He motioned to his teammate to try it out. 10. Chan. Sakura commenced. You're already suffering from mild chakra exhaustion, use any more and you might actually die. We just don't want to see you get her. Gaia. As the four genin turned around, they saw the two Konoha Chunin with their bloody hands protruding from their chests. Although they were unable to see the attacker, Seigan was able to identify them quickly. It's about damn time. Where were you Reiko? The stunning Daidenshi laughed and threw both of her bodies at Seigan, saying, I was just having a little fun. She brought her finger covered in blood to her lips and licked the blood away slowly, staring at Sakura with seductive glances as she did so. Kaya. Sakura. Chan. How have you been? Did you miss me since our last encounter? I sure did, your blood, um, so delicious. Sakura thought, fucking creepy vampire conveniently forgetting her own vampiric deeds with just one Sasuke Uchiha. The moment she saw the second brooch around her cloak, her talisman of fire, her eyes narrowed. For the other two, she knew the female Daidenshi was present. I must prepare the gears. Reiko became enraged at Sakura for not answering. With a dramatic sigh, as if the Pinkette's lack of reaction had really depressed her, she asked, Ah, oh, are you still mad at me for taking the talisman of fire? before turning to face her fellow Daidenshi and yanking out the sword that was impaled through his stomach. Seigan. Kun. Hurry up. I want to taste Sakura. Chan again. Reiko's violent assistance caused Seigan to merely scowl as he grabbed the almost. Dead Chunin and sank his teeth into his neck, not even flinching. Hakaiden. Datsoryoku, destruction release, draining of strength. The Konoha Genins watched in dismay as Seigan drank every last drop of their fellow shinobi's blood in front of them. Would he then use the blood and chakra to regenerate? It was accurate. They could see that the wounds were all starting to heal. Then, two minutes after Seigan had drained the blood from both Chunin, he was back on his feet, acting as though he had never been injured in the first place. Now reduced to mere skeletons, the two courageous shinobi who had risked their lives to aid Naruto and his friends. The Sword Wielding Daidenshi approached Reiko's side and gave him a crack in the neck. Man, that felt good. Gotta admit though, Pinky over there can really pack a punch. Reiko laughed. That's my Sakura. Chan, and you know you loved it. True. Masochist. 
This coming from the sadistic vampire. Reiko chirped, well, Takaya is a sadomasochist, best of both worlds. But I personally prefer that Zabuza guy, so big and strong with the smell of a demon, um, gets me all wet just thinking about him. Reiko shivered and said, you can fuck him later, but Segan paid no attention to her at all, focusing only on Naruto. Right now, we have a Tentai, heavenly body, user to kill, and you want those talismans. What about the others? Segan materialized behind Tenten with his sword impaled through her chest, saying, hum, both. Are a nuisance. Tenten. With his foot in Saigon's neck, Naruto materialized in an instant, sending the Daidenshi hurtling back into a neighboring building. Collier, neck. Was all that was visible on Naruto's angry, enraged face. This bastard attacking his friends, how daring. He had no intention of stopping. As soon as Naruto struck Saigon's sword with his blades, the energy from Tenyu and Mugetsu's chakras ignited, causing the sword to burst into flames. Just as a slightly singed Daidenshi fled into the air in the aftermath of the chakra explosion, Naruto materialized above him, his sword swinging down in an overhead strike. Click. As Segan blocked, redirected, and eventually countered, the three blades collided, sending sparks skyward, only for Naruto to mimic his moves. They keep moving away from the blonde's friends as they trade blows and dodge each other's stabs and swings. They were really engaged in combat above the Hokage Monument. It's got to stop, and I have to keep Segan away from the others. And with that in mind, the blonde angel launched a fresh, powerful attack. Saitoryu. Dai Tenjiri, Holy Sword Style, Great Celestial Slash. Sakura, meanwhile, hurried over to her friend who had been hurt, her hands already glowing with healing chakra. The deadly Kunoichi appeared happy to let Sakura tend to her friend's wounds before she intervened. But the pinkette knew that wouldn't be sufficient because Tenten had a pierced heart and she only knew basic first aid. She knew her partner couldn't use his holy healing methods because they all required extended, uninterrupted periods of time, but if he could distract the sword. Wielding Daidenshi enough, they might be able to get Tenten and Neji to flee to the closest safe haven. Sakura yelled, Neji! And shoved a pill down the brunette's throat. If nothing else, the additional chakra would help her survive. Take Tenten and go to the nearest evacuation site. There'll be medic. Nin's stationed there. I've done all I can, but that'll only give you another minute of extra time, so hurry. We'll hold them off. With Tenten in his arms, the Hyuga branch member immediately took off, reaching speeds that validated his reputation as a Konoha prodigy. Neji whispered under his breath, this can't be your fate. I refuse for this to be your fate. Just hang on Tenten, I'll get you there in no time. He then used his almost flawless chakra control to blur through the village and arrive at the evacuation site. I know you don't like music, but look how sad they are, did you have to do that, Segan? Kun? Reiko said absently, not even bothering to glance at the fleeing Neji and Tenten or even Segan, who was now long gone and fighting Naruto. But she did see Sakura slowly adopt a stance, a murderous intent expression marring her lovely face. Oh! Sakura! Chan! Are you finally ready to fly? E.H. What are you doing? The blush and perspiration on the pinkette's skin had started to rise. I'm going to make you pay, Gia Seconda, Gear Second. Reiko grinned. You used that technique against that Rock Lee guy, at first, I thought it was you opening the Hachiman, Eight Gates, but I quickly realized that wasn't the case. Whatever it is you're doing to your body, it clearly involves chakra and that automatically means your technique can't affect them. You are K. The pinkette snarled, her fist deep in Reiko's stomach, you talk too much. It was very satisfying to watch the woman cough up blood from the brutal blow. You were right though, had I been releasing my chakra to somehow increase my physical abilities, your haite, negation, would have rendered it useless. But. Sakura attacked Reiko from every angle before abruptly disappearing and leaving behind afterimages. She spoke as she attacked, wanting the Daidenshi to know that there were weaknesses in her supposedly all. Powerful technique that could destroy any Taijutsu, Genjutsu, or even Ninjutsu. My gears involved the usage of the elemental talismans to control different aspects of my body, from within. Reiko's gaze widened. Sakura whispered, taking pleasure in twisting the knife a little further, he he he, I see you figured it out. That's right. The chakra never leaves my body. And it was all thanks to you that I figured it out. After fighting you directly, I figured out your technique's weaknesses. 
As long as you have it on, you also can't release chakra outside your body. I noticed how all your genjutsu techniques required physical contact to initiate, so I have to thank you for giving me all the clues and showing me all the flaws, now, thanks to my gears, I can exploit it perfectly. You and Namikaze will die today. Konoha will fall and those talismans will be mine. Even with your gears. You're still no match for the Daidenshi. Reiko growled, losing all trace of her normally alluring voice as she made a vain attempt to find her opponent. This dumb girl, a mortal with pink hair, could never master her technique. It was not feasible. However, even so. We'll investigate that further, a hushed voice said from behind. Reiko froze, saying, Bitch, it's payback time. She wasn't a Daidenshi, though. She would not lose, even if her strategy had failed against this girl in some way. She was unable to lose. Bring it. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.